革新のカーボンベゼル。ブルートゥース搭載。G ショック。カシオ。横浜。Ultimate lubricant. Mortis. Tenton to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch の technology を凝縮。チャンピオンを取るための Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. 究極の静かさと安全性。オンロード。オフロード。世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダWhat's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
Play to in Japan. Boy. And we have finally made it here for our first round of the 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Series here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. We are in Mie Prefecture, obviously in Japan because it is FD Japan, but uh, we're about to start the top 16. Look at the beautiful cars, competitive drivers all lined up, ready to go. We're about to start the opening ceremony. So. Uh, before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and uh, play the Japanese National Anthem. Please, everybody, hats off and please stand. Thank you guys for that. Now let's go ahead and start from where we can view all the way to the left. So the first battle we see, the first driver that's gonna be driving is uh, qualifying first from yesterday's qualified car number 57. Driving the Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange JZX100 Chaser. This is the Young Gun Kanta. He's like 22 or something, yeah. Yeah, going against Kanta is a man that came all the way from overseas from the United States, competing in FDJ and FDJ in the States with Team Kazama with power vehicles in the Motis Lexus RC VR 4.3 Ken Gushi. That's going to be an interesting battle. But then the second battle following uh, the hot battle, hot first battle is... Uh, a driver that qualified eighth from yesterday's qualify. Car number 77, Team Cusco Racing GR86, Yusuke Kusaba. Going against Kusaba is an OG of Formula Drift Japan. Been here since day one. Struggled a little bit here. He's here ready to fight in the Tanaba SSR Team Dunlop with Well, JZX100 Mark II, number 38, Tadahiro Fukada. The third battle of the top 16, ranking fourth in qualify from yesterday's qualify, car number 99, driving the little Corolla that could from Hiroshima Toyota, Team Droopy, A85, Treno, Kazuya Matsukawa. They got the names a little mixed up there, but next up you'll see, you already saw his name, but he's over here in the his new car. He was an S15 last year in the Altus Tire Drift, Team Fukushima Z. 34, number 311, Naoto Suenaga. And now this is an ex-champ of D1 and also Formula Drift USA. He is back for the full season, driving the Trail Motor Apex Racing GR86. He is the world's infamous car number 87, Daigo Saito. Going against him is a very aggressive driver in the S14 with the 5X tires, Navigate Pinsky, KRC, MJC, Takatoshi Imamaida. Yeah. 
the fifth battle of the top 16. This car looks identical to Daigo Saito, which is also his teammate, driving the Trail Motor Apex Racing GR86. Car number 10, first time in the Formula Drift Series, Formula Drift Japan Series, it's Hokuto Matsuyama. He did qualify second, but he'll be going against the champ himself right here. He took first last year here at Suzuka Twin Circuit, and he wants to do it again with Team Weld in the JZX100 Mark II, Koichi Yamashita. And this is also another driver. He's an XD1 2019 champ coming into Formula Drift Japan Series, driving the Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange S15 Silvia, packed with the 2JZ. Car number 27, Masanori Kohashi. Going against him in a beast of a car. Got a new build underneath the hood. No longer a, a 1GR, it's a VR now in the TMS Racing Team Silo and Tire BMW E92. It's going to be Kazumi Takahashi. All right, so second to last battle of the top 16. This is going to be a wild one because it's these two wild drivers. V-Style Good Ride with Tetsujin JZX100 Chaser. Car number five, it is Tomoki Tanaka. And Robbie's not playing around. This driver going against him is a very, very aggressive driver with a VR underneath his hood of his S15 and the car shop glitter with Car Life Orange. Next dream, Yuji Saito. And the last but not least battle, this man also traveled from the USA, currently competing in the FD USA series. Goodbye Motorsport 350Z. He's in a left-hand drive Z this time. He is car number 530, Wataru Matsuyama. Going against him, came from FDJ2, moving up to FDJ, laying his mark in the top 16 here, fighting for a spot, is with Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, JZX100 Chaser, Koji Nagase. So that's pretty cool that we have drivers that came up from FDJ2, from different series, and the veterans that stayed. So uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting mix-up. So I have no idea who's going to be taking the win this uh, today. Yeah, but what's, what's really interesting to me is the two gentlemen that came all the way from the United States to come out here compete. And they're out here to show their mark of how they're doing an FD in the U.S., bringing it out here to FDJ. This is a list of the top 16 drivers right here. Very interesting uh, names lined up here. And also the cars. I counted about 10 different kind of cars uh, out here. I mean, some JZX chassis, a lot of new GR86s. There's a 370D, 350C, A85. And also what is it? RC and a BMW. Man, this is a, this is a good mix-up. Exactly. And what, three VR38 powered uh, beasts out here? And there you go, once again on the Japanese side, Tom Saiba with Noburo Tanaguchi right there. Real popular name right there. A lot of you know him. And then next to him is Yoshi uh, Imamura. Imamura, and here we are. This is Daijiro Yoshihara, one of the guest judges. And next to Dai is uh, Yoichi Imamura, also the judge, the third judge here in uh, Formula Drift Japan Series. And me, Robin Nishida, and also Kenny Harris over here. Uh, we'll be talking to you. If you don't like our voices, just, just press hit the mute, mute button. But uh, if you guys would uh, listen carefully, there you go. There's uh, Yoichi Mamura. He's also an expert driver. This guy's an expert driver. I just like driving. And I'm just here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the cars are all taking off to go and get ready for their top 16 tandem battles. And you know what? If you missed the top 32, it was actually pretty exciting. We were pretty lively, I feel. I, I feel like our energy level was pretty high because the drivers, yes, it was kind of slow. It seemed kind of boring, but it wasn't. It still had its excitement and its ups and downs. I think we had three repeat one more times on one battle. So we'll see if we can, you know, dial. they could dial it down and get this solid this time. Yeah, so the... The top 16 lineup looks pretty promising because um, we got the number one qualifier, which is, I believe he's like, I, I believe Kanta's like 22. Then you got uh, Ken Gushi. He's young, but he's a veteran because he's been in the series and been competing since he was 16. So he's been doing it for close to 20 years. Yeah, there's a, 
and it's crazy the teams here if you haven't seen the the behind the scenes go check out the what is it formula drift japan instagram we had a little skim of all the cars pits pit areas and stuff like that so go check that out but Yeah, go check that out. Make sure you watch us to the end um, and cheer on your favorite driver. Or if you don't have a favorite driver, look it up or uh, check the websites and you'll be able to find it. And maybe you'll find you'll become a fan of somebody today after you watch these uh, battles. But um, unfortunately, the weather here is really bad. Um, at least it's not windy and it's not a storm. It's just really rain. It's just, just really wet. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the drivers will be able to uh, maneuver around this wet and show us some close ba tandem battles. Uh, very uh, excited to see how the outcome is going to be. And, you know, the round one is usually the round that kind of shapes up how you're going to do for the rest of the season. So it's very, very important. And speaking of the season, last year here at Suzuka Twin Circuit, we suffered the same consequences of what we're doing with right now, the, the rainy weather. So unfortunately, we're dealing with it, but they were able to succeed and conquer what they needed to. All right, let me go ahead and read off to you uh, the supporters and... Um, some of the companies that we work with here in Japan is Motizoil, Carport Maruden, RSR, Brid, Ogura Crutch, Graham Lights, Cusco, Project Mew, BN Sports, Swiss Springs, Hot Wheels, Comtech, Arai Helmets, Treasure One Company, D-Max, Ling Long Tire, Vitur Tire, Silent Tire, 5X Tires, Kenda Tires, Valino, Good Ride, Toyo Tires, Good Gear, Dunlop, Bridgestone, Yokohama Tires, Valenti, Edifice, G-Shock. These are some of the sponsors and supporters that we have that makes this series happen. And before I thank them, I would like to thank you guys for tuning in because you guys are the main uh, power to our source where we can ha make this happen because you guys are watching us uh, live stream. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in, uh, even though me and Kenny... You know, we're amateurs and, you know, our voices aren't, you know, music to your ears sometimes. Uh, but we're trying our best. I must say, well said. Everybody, you should give Robbie a round of applause. That was well said right there by Robbie and a phenomenal job. But, yes, thank you all out there for tuning in. And uh, before we go into the top 16, we'll be right back.
横浜。The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valentine. Ultimate lubricant, Mortis. Tenton to 革新 Ogura Clutch のテクノロジーを凝縮、チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. 究極の静かさと安全性。オンロード、オフロード。世界中で活躍するケンダその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダ
横浜The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. と確信オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC 究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍する剣だその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダ
And we're back. Sorry about that delay, but here we are. We had to let the drivers get ready to go for this top 16 battle here for the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan 2022 Series here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. We're at Mia Prefecture. It's like in the middle of uh, the mainland of Japan. And uh, yes, it is wet, obviously. Um, there's a lot of people here, though. I uh, really feel bad. I wish it was a little more dry so everybody can kind of chill and just uh, sit on the ground. But it's kind of muddy around the area. So there you go. There's a little froggy there in the family. I hope they enjoy drifting. Um, you know, I feel I feel happy when people get to watch drifting and they get to enjoy drifting. So a uh, little shout out to the Formula Drift USA guys. Um, everybody over there who usually comes over here and the judges um, because, you know, it's a lot complicating to travel right now. So we are not uh, having all the U.S. guys over here. Um, miss you guys. Hope to be back uh, one of these days soon. And also like to th thank uh, Daijiro Yoshihara for joining us um, all the way from the USA, uh, coming to be uh, a guest judge for the round one here in the 22 series. And uh, a little shout out to um, Jerry Yang from Jerry Yang Racing, <laughs> my whole team. Uh, I saw him pop up on, the, on one of the messages. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. And also all of you that are usually watching the FDUS series, thank you for watching and enjoying the FD Japan uh, series. Um, and last, uh, what was it last weekend or the weekend before, we, they just had the Formula Drift USA uh, Long Beach. And uh, this is our season opener uh, for the FD Japan uh, series. So, And then next week, we're going to have the opening for FDJ2. Yeah. And that will be live also, but I think it's going to be a dual... Um, Japanese English combo, so it's going to be kind of. Yeah, it's going to be on one. Uh, it's going to be on uh, one channel, uh, but the FDJ2 series is just like the ProSpec in the U.S., where you have the Pro uh, FD, uh, FD US and then the ProSpec. And here are your top 16 drivers. Uh, beautiful lineup. Um, you see some familiar names and some new names, but they all drive uh, like madmen. Um, even in the rain too, they're they're not going to back down and give them any space. I'm pretty sure that they're going to be showing us some close tandems, and it's going to be a lot of excitement going on. Even though we don't have smoke um, and it's wet, you know, there's a good parts about the wet where the cars are very hard to handle, um, but these guys will be taking care of it because they're professionals. And now we get to sit back and watch them. Well, I have to judge them and talk about them too. But for you guys. You guys could sit back. But yeah, one thing I want to highlight, show. like you said, is there's 10 different cars out of the 16. So there's a vast ver variety of different cars for these top 16. And the engine setup that they got is insane. Yeah, so I just see them creeping up to the start line. This is going to be a very, very interesting battle because this very, very young driver, Kanta, he's podium many times in FD Japan and also uh, been in the series for a couple years. But he's only like 20, a little over 20 years old. So uh, he's not... He's got a lot more to go. Uh, talking about a young driver, this guy's young, but he's still a veteran in the U.S. Kenshiro Gushi uh, started drifting professionally since he was 16, and he is driving the RC to the right, uh, the Motis color RC, um, versus uh, the Team Orange uh, Gray JZX100 Chaser driven by Kanta. Man, this is going to be a good battle, and this is going to be a good opener for our top 16 battles. It looks like they're getting this green light ready to go. Kanta in the lead, while Gushi is going to be in the chase position. All and right. here they are coming through the chicane, ripping for top 16 of round one. Here they are coming in out of zone one. Whoa. Kanta, nice job. But look at that Gushi right there on his fender. Whoa. Oh, making it happen with that proximity. Oh. Right there. Oh, huge correction right there by Gushi. But let's see if he can clean it up for the rest of the time. And Kanta doing his thing in the lead position with the lead qualified run yesterday. Coming through the touch and go. Oh, oh. And it sounds like, oh, oh, another huge correction. Sounds like he had a lot of engine bug there, something going on. Yeah, it sounds like something is wrong with Gucci's car. Um, and maybe that's what happened uh, after the outside zone too. But that was a very, very impressive um, initiation and also driving by both the driver. Look at that, not much space in between the cars. Kanta making it all the way out to the outside zone too. They're right there, there's a big correction by Gucci. Kanta just doing his thing, running the wide line, but Gucci is just trying to hang on and stay with him. But around here, we can just hear the car. It does not sound like it's happy, and he is having a hard time to finish off the track right there. There's a big correction as well. Kanta just doing his thing, uh, finishing off the track. Uh, what a great lead run, but I would have to say, man, the attack, 
you know, the OG Ken Gushi had to show the Japanese crowd what's up uh, in a car that he just barely knows. This is the first time he's competing in this car. First time competing um, at this track as well. So very impressive. It looks like he is going to go back to the pits maybe to get checked out. Um, it might have been obvious. Let me go ahead and see what's going on. Yeah, Yana uh, Kanta right there doing his thing like always. Oh, you can see right there, yeah, Gushi is heading back to the pits to find out what the issue was. Because right after that touch and go, we heard a, a, his engine wasn't sounding too normal. But I must say, Kanta is, is one to look out for this year. Because last year he came in at Sugo, debut in this car. Podium took it all wasn't able to make the whole entire season, but he says he's here to fight this season. He's going to make things happen. So he's definitely a, a big representation of Team Orange. Hopefully the, the Team Kazama with uh, Power Vehicles can get this car figured out. Because this is the debut of this Lexus RC VR 4.3. And there you go, you can see. There you go, that's the Motis trailer that they have. They have like four big rigs, which is uh, unusual for Japan. This is, uh, that means the series is getting bigger, but there you go, they are checking the car. And I believe that they just start, they just believe, I, I believe they just started the five minute, uh, the competition timeout right now. Something is going on with the car. They are going to try to figure it out. You got the laptop hooked up to the car, and uh, hopefully they can get the bugs out so uh, that would, so Gucci would get a chance to do a clean run, even though he is sitting on a disadvantage. Look at that. On a disadvantage. Look at that VR shoved underneath that hood. That's a lot of engine underneath there. But yeah, yeah you know, it sounds like it because his first run or was it his first run or his second run for or first run Set. yesterday as qualify the car was running rough and it didn't sound like it was healthy and uh they were able to fix the manifold i believe they said the exhaust manifold was cracked or something um and they came in and uh, he was able to battle it out at his top top 32 but now uh, the car is running rough and they're trying to figure out maybe that's the similar problem uh maybe it's the gremlin that's hidden right now um that didn't happen uh, earlier today Maybe it wasn't just the manifold that they fixed. Maybe there's something deeper. Um, so they are double checking everything, and I'm pretty sure that they're on the, they're 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 checking the ECU. They have the laptop hooked up. Looks like making sure there's no vacuum leaks. Yeah, check that out. Look at that. It's, it's got a VR in it. Like that's insane. Like it's stock <laughs> sitting in there. So yeah, Motis, uh, Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, they brought five cars out to this event. So that yeah, team so, has been very busy this event. Yeah, they support five vehicles. And I believe he was talking about support. They're going to be supporting eight for the EBISU round. But that's the home of, uh, EBISU Circuit is home for um, Power Vehicles as well. And I believe Andrew Gray is going to be competing in the next round. And uh, Motis uh, and Kazama Auto has had a good relationship with uh, Andrew Gray for a long time. They've been supporting each other for a long time. So that is what um, is going to be a little bit easier for them because that's their home track. Um, everything is kind of in there. So, oh, I believe they found something in the inside, uh, one of the throttle bodies maybe. But, man, hands down to the team. The amount of pressure that's put on them, five minutes goes by real quick if you really think about it in the grand scheme of things. And right there, two yeah, minutes and 35 and minutes. seconds left. So we'll see here. And like we were talking about early on, this is Ken Gushi's, I mean, he's only driven this car a handful of times. He arrived late on Friday, was only able to get a few practice sessions in. And then he had to qualify, and I think he said he only had like eight runs under his belt before he got to do his first qualify run or something. So Yeah, and actually being a right-hand drive car instead of a left-hand drive car. I mean, I've seen him drive a right-hand drive car before, so I'm pretty sure he's okay with it. Um, but there you are. There is the driver, Ken Gushi, from the USA. Uh, but, uh, you know, he is a Japanese uh, that was born in Japan in Okinawa, so the islands down south. 
It looks like he is uh, getting ready to get back out there, so I'm pretty sure that they might have figured out what is wrong with the car. He has about two minutes left. Man, I'm telling you, this is like nerve-wracking, like when you're in the car and you're just kind of like, are you going to be able to go out there or what? But this is hard because he is going against one of the top contenders that we have this weekend, Kanta, which is waiting at the start line right now. And as you can see, the timer is going... Um, and uh, there's a minute and 20 seconds left. Oh, looks like they're ready to go. So he will be um, giving his second run. But you know, so he is sitting on an incomplete though. So this is gonna be a very um, hard for him uh, to make this work, but I'm pretty sure he's just gonna give it his all and we're going to be able to see an insane run by both of these drivers. Yeah, without that issue, it was already looking phenomenal. He oh, came out man. with a bang with being door-to-door, -door, fender to fender right up against Kanta. So we'll see how he's going to do and see if Kanta can adjust himself to the aggressive driving of Ken Gushi. And that is a good sight to see right there. Gushi pulling up to the line, ready to go in the lead position while we have Kanta in the chase for the second run here of the first battle in the top 16. Who is going to move on to the great eight? All right, so since Gushi's car was acting up on his first run, he did incomplete, uh, but he is going to be leading Kanta. And now let's see how Kanta is going to give chase. Oh, looks like... There is maybe the cone. Yeah, I think he had a cone. So so that's a pretty big touch? car. Yeah, it's a wide car. It's a pretty wide car. Um, ask Andrew Gray. Because <laughs> Andrew Gray has one, but his is uh, powered by a 2J. So that's going to be awesome because I think next round we'll be able to see both of these R RCs. Very, very similar colors. Uh, that would be kind of cool to see them drive together too. Yeah, side by side. But yeah, Andrew Gray said he will be at Ebisu. He's going to make it out there. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it to this event. Well, I guess he's not going to make it out there. He's already there. That's yeah, true. So <laughs> he just has to walk out of his house. Then You're right. There. <laughs> so there, there they go. go right now. Here they go for... Gushi in the lead, Kanta in the chase position. Here they come into outer zone one. Gushi coming real aggressive. Nice job into outer zone one, carrying it all the way out to the outer points of outer zone two. But look at Kanta right there, diving in on Gushi. Oh, and making oh. contact. Wow. Was not expecting that. That much aggression from Kanta right there, but ooh. Ooh, something looks bent maybe, but uh, yeah. Let's see if we can see this replay right here. Man, and sitting on that advantage, he didn't have to be that aggressive either. So there you go, Gushi is, yeah, he's on gas and it doesn't look like he's trying to slow down. He just made a wide line and threw a lot of angles, so. Yeah, in contact. And, and uh, here we go, this is uh, Fukada and Mano. Seventh one more oh, time. Never, I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah it looks like that uh, Kanta kind of dove in there and he didn't fulfill that outer zone three, which put him in the wrong line for where Gushi was at on that outer zone. But let's see if everything's gonna be okay with the team Kazama with power vehicles. RC because it looks a little yeah it looks like uh, there's a lot of camber maybe yeah in that front right on the front right of uh, Gushi's vehicle but yeah Kanta uh, there was contact and uh... but like you were saying Kanta kind of had this I wouldn't say in the bag 100% but he already had the advantage so coming on as aggressive as he did, it was kind of uh, unexpected. But yeah, if you're just joining in, this is the first battle of the top 16. And there you go, one more time by Imamura, Dai, and Robbie Nishida, all with a one more time. So we will see these two battle it out once again. 
So we'll see how they will battle it out next time. And we have yet to have the first person to move on to the grade eight. Wow. So who would have thought that would have happened? Because, uh, yeah, uh, Gushi's car didn't want to cooperate with them. He incompleted behind Kanta. The next, next time around, Gushi leading. Kanta hits him at the outside zone three. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a one more time. I mean, that right there, I mean, they're lo something, somebody's looking out for uh, Ken Gushi there because he definitely... Yeah, he's been getting by because the car run rough yeah. uh, on his first qualify run, and he didn't get a good score, and we were yeah. worried. We were like, oh, he might not even qualify. And he comes in, everything's okay, and now it looked like he was going to uh, get knocked out. But here we go. Moving next on, battle. we got the next one. We got Kusaba Fukata right here coming in. Kusaba debuting this GR86 first time, and look at the way he is controlling this car, carrying it all the way out to outer zone two. But Fukata not able to hold on right there, and losing control. And Kusaba doing a phenomenal job. And this guy right here, night and day from his A90 to this GR86, he's doing a phenomenal job. I talked to him early, and he said, I love this car. The car is what I wanted it to be. So, and he's definitely showing it right here in his lead position, doing a phenomenal job. Unfortunately, Fukata just couldn't hold on there in outer zone two and spun out. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I think uh, Fukata is having a very hard time trying to figure this, uh, figure the track out the way it is wet because um, he did three one more times earlier at top 32 and he still can't uh, figure it out where he just over rotated behind Kusaba, so um, that's an incomplete for uh, Fukada. But man, like you said, Kusaba it looks very sharp uh, behind the wheel of that GR86 because he looks very, very comfortable and he looks very competitive in it too. He just really imagine does. what this season is going to look like because he came in like six last year with that 890 Supra, uh, which Hiroya Minoa is driving now. Uh, now we're going to see how he is going to do in this season with this brand new build uh, from Cusco. Yeah, you're right. But one thing I want to let you all know is Fukata was saying he had to do a subframe change and a few other changes to his car. And he says it's just not what he's used to. So he's really starting to try to understand this car and the wet conditions aren't helping him by any means. Yeah, so now they're going to start off. Um, Fukata sitting on an incomplete. He's going to go ahead and lead. Uh, Kusaba is going to give chase, but Fukata is going to do whatever he can uh, to lay down a clean uh, lead run. And he's there been struggling. Oh, huge correction. He's been struggling right here. Can he hold through? Looks like he's holding through. And Kusaba right here is about to close in and dial it in right here at outer zone three. Not too bad. Looks like both of them are kind of struggling getting out of outer zone three there. And carry it through here to outer zone four. Not bad at all, but looks like Fukada need a little bit more after his chase run in uh, spinning out in the outer zone two. Yeah, so right here, them taking off from the start line. Uh, looked like Kusaba played it very, very safe. And uh, right there again, the initiation, a bad initiation by Fukada. Could not get to angle uh, right away. Kusaba running a very, very small line, but he is making sure that he is staying close within proximity uh, behind Fukada. And right here, they both very slowly but drifts through in front of the judging stand. And uh, once again, Kusaba running a very smaller line than Fukada, but at the same time, um, you have to understand that Fukada is also sitting on an incomplete. Imamura with Kusaba. Dayashara going with Kusaba and Robbie Nishida going for Yusuke Kusaba, the first to move on to the grade eight. Congratulations to Kusaba. Looks like his brand new GR soup, or B, I'm sorry, GR86 is working out for him. So looking forward to seeing him. He doesn't know, he doesn't know uh, who he's going against yet, but uh, we'll find out in a little bit. But up at the line already is Matsukawa in his A85 going against Sue Naga in his 370Z powered by a VR. Let's see how it's going to pan out for these two here. So Sue Naga was in an S15 last year. He's definitely start to, starting to get control of this Z here that he picked up. Um, but we'll see. So Matsukawa is in the lead position here. 
Here they are coming into outer zone one. Beautiful job, Suenaga right there, close proximity to him. Let's see this transition into outer to zone three. Not bad at all, look at that, Suenaga closing in. Oh, and dipping a few tires there, but able to hold on right here. Matsukawa trying to get through, dipping a tire right there. Coming into outer zone four, and man, Suenaga the whole way pressurizing. Matsukawa all the way around the course. Play right here, coming around to outer zone two. Both cars, beautiful job. Both dipping a tire right there in outer zone three. And that's a struggle for both cars in that touch and go. Another replay. Man, Sue Naga right there, trying to mimic every bit of Matsukawa's run. Getting a little thrown off there by dipping that tire. Yeah, so, sorry about that. I was, uh, I was watching, also had to do a little bit of a communication there, but it looks like um, an aggressive chaser, uh, Sue Naga, was close throughout the whole time. But at that same time, I'd have to say Matsukawa's lead run was pretty good too. Yeah, pretty and you solid. know, behind every good uh, lead run is a good chase. So uh, let's see how uh, Suenaka is going to uh, lead Matsukawa and see how much uh, Matsukawa could pressure uh, Suenaka. Here they come right now. Suenaka in the oh. lead, looks like a pylon touch. Yep, confirmed pylon touch. So yeah, last year, Kumakubo, last round, round six at Fuji, took it all in this exact 370Z. Not sure what adjustments they made, but I know they made probably some fine-tuned adjustments to fit Suenaga's driving. Um, he's leaving the S15 and came into this power plant here. While you have Matsukawa, he's been in this A85 for years now. Yeah, this car has definitely, definitely been through a lot. Uh, the A85 2 GR power, twin turbo. Let's see how he's gonna come in in the chase position. Matsukawa, Suenaga in the lead, coming around to outer zone one or outer zone two here. Not bad by Suenaga. Matsukawa definitely has to close that proximity a little bit more, but it looks like he's kind of leaving a safe gap from Suenaga. Here it is, right here. The touch and go coming into outer zone four. Oh, and Matsukawa just holding on right there in outer zone four. And almost lost it. All right, so watching this uh, replay right here, it looks like Suenaga is uh, pretty much trying to do what he's supposed to be doing as a lead driver. He is making it out to the outside zone too. Looks like Matsukawa is running a slightly smaller line. End plate of his wing got hit, uh, hitting the cone. Does a good job at the touch and go. He almost fills it like a zone. And right here, I thought uh, Matsukawa was gonna lose it because he kind of went in hot and he was able to control it. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, see what the other judges has, has in mind as well. Definitely gonna make it tough for these judges here. Let's see if we can see a side-by-side. -side. Here you go, Suenaga this time. Yeah, so I think the uh, the factor the factor of uh, this battle is going to be Matsukawa's lead run around outside zone three area. And uh, yes, there was contact by um, Suenaga uh, behind, but it looked like Matsukawa kind of went off um, off course 
on the outside zone three area when he was leading. And uh, we're gonna have to compare the lead to lead chase to chase here. And I think we made a decision. Yochi Mura going with Sue Naga, Dayosh Har going to Sue Naga, and then Robbie Nishida going with Sue Naga. So Naoto Sue Naga gets the win and will be moving on to the grade eight. So good job. Matsukawa had a good weekend, but unfortunately couldn't make it. He was trying to hold in for his Hiroshima Toyota team, Team Droopy. But Sue Naga is going to be moving on with the Atlas Tire Drift Team Fukushima. Already at the line, ready to go. It's going to be leading up is going to be Daigo Saito leading against Takatoshi Imamida. So Saito in the lead, Imamida in the chase. We'll see how this go. Daigo's with the trail, Motor Apex Racing, Timar, GR86, going against the 5X Tire Navigate Pinsky Karasi. S14 and with Imamida. Imamida has been a wild driver, very aggressive, and we'll see how he's going to pan out against Daigo himself. All right, they, there you go. They flipped the names back around. So there you go, Daigo in the lead, Imamido in the chase, and looks like they're ready to go. All right, let's see if this crazy car <laughs> is going to do something crazy on the track. Daigo Saito leading, Imamido chasing. Nice job into outer zone one, trying to fill all of it. Here he is filling all of two. Let's see if Imamido can pick it up and uh, close that proximity. Oh, looks like he's falling just a little behind, playing it a little safe against Daigo. And Daigo just doing his thing, filling all zones. Beautiful lead run by Daigo Saito. Hey, I know it's the drivers and the builds and they're amazing, but I would have to say one thing. These brand new GR86s look really good because Kusaba's loving it. Um, Daigo's teammate, obviously Daigo's loving it too. Daigo's teammate who qualifies second, Matsuyama, looks like he's comfortable too. Look at this thing. He looks like he's able to put the car where he, where he wants to put it. Running the outside zone, filling the outside zones the way he's supposed to with maximum angle. Uh, looks like it's a very good job by Daigo Saito as lead driver. And it looks like Imamida is nowhere near um, the lead driver, having a hard time trying to get closer. So now we are flipping it where Imamida is going to be leading Daigo. And Daigo Saito will be giving chase. And you know this guy isn't just going to let the lead driver go because uh, he likes to chase cars now. Exactly. Get really close. <laughs> so hopefully he doesn't abuse him too hard through this track. And here he is right here, Imamida in the lead right here, coming real aggressive in his entry. But Daigo right behind him. Look at that. Closing in on Imamida right there on his left rear fender. Let's see how he's going to do here. Closing it up on outer zone three. This is where all of them catch that close. Proximity to one another. It looks like Daigo kind of played a little safe there, but still had better proximity than Imamida did on his chase run. And here they both are finishing off into outer zone four. And once again, Daigo pushing him the whole way through this track. Yeah, so comparing the two battles right now, proximity is obviously, yes, uh, Saito has more proximity than Imamida, but now I have to compare the lead runs because there is proximity, but Saito's line is a little bit small. Well, it's not, I guess it's not that bad. Uh, it wasn't as bad as when he was battling the top of the team with uh, Kinoa. 
but I'm not going to say that, um, I mean, proximity-wise, yes, he is dominant. But uh, it would be nicer if he was uh, running a little bit more of a wider line uh, behind, you know, Maeda. Yeah, deeper in the zone. But overall, looks like Daigo's trying to make a statement out here. Yochi Murmura going with Saito. Dai going with Daigo and Robbie going with Daigo. So Daigo Saito gets the win and will be moving on to the great eight. And he'll be going against Suenaga. Yeah, so Daigo Saito takes the win. Uh, congratulations. He will be battling Suenaga uh, for top eight, the great eight. And let's see how his teammate is going to do here going against... Yamashita the champ. I know, here we go. This is going to be exciting too because we got a young driver, Matsuyama, first time in the series going against the two year in a row champ and also winning this uh, round last year here at the Suzuka Twin. And here they are coming in right here. Matsukawa coming around into outer zone one, but look at that right there. Yamashita trying to close in that proximity, dipping a tire right there by, Mats by Matsukawa, but let's Matsuyama. see Matsuyama coming around to outer zone three. Not bad at all. Yamashita trying to keep it close here. Oh, this one's going to be a tough one for the judges. And let's, oh, let's see how they're going to finish. Oh, nice finish right there. Ooh. Wow, beautiful job by both drivers. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is something what I wanted to see. Uh, close tandem. And, uh, yeah, both the drivers did an amazing job. It looks like uh, Matsukawa. <laughs> Matsuyama. Matsuyama, you, you're I making me say Matsukawa. Matsuyama did a good job in outside zone one, fills outside zone two, and I like the way that Yamashita is following him and chasing him on the same line and keeping the proximity. This is a little bit different from what we saw earlier from Daigo Saito being close, but he's on a smaller line, but this is what we'd like to see. He didn't go to the touch and go, but right here, he attacked. Um, he is on a smaller line right here, but very big job by both drivers. But once again, Yamas is able to do this because he is chasing a very good lead. Exactly. So we're going to definitely see how have to see how Yamas is going to adjust himself being in the lead this time while Matsuyama is going to be in the chase. And like we've been saying this whole time, Matsuyama has been very aggressive all weekend long. So we're going to see how he is going to, you know, match up to the champ himself. And like Robbie says, with every good lead, a good chase so i think this is going to be a good tandem battle right here coming in yamashita look at already right side by side with one another matsuyama coming around look at that right there coming into outer zone three yamashita just doing his thing trying to stay focused feeling all of outer zone three and look at that right there by matsuyama and it looks like yamashita kind of lost him a little on that touch and go but he's trying to dive in right at the end Wow, that was a good battle. Now I'm going to have to look at the replay right here. And I want to compare the lead runs as well because they were both great. Right here, very subtle way to enter, but Yamasa doing what he's supposed to as well. Built outside zone one, two, and three. But it looks like Matsuyama has to be on a tighter line to keep the box in. He also gets left here a little after uh, they were leaving outside zone 3. And Yamashita also filling outside zone 4. And it looks like Matsuyama had to cut in uh, cut in to catch up, play catch up at the outside zone 4 to Matsuyama. So, man, That's, this is a very close one. Yeah, it's very interesting because Matsuyama hasn't really suffered anything with uh, a grip-related situation for him to get kind of burned by Yamashita. That's kind of a... Uh, Unique because he hasn't seen it all day long, but right here, that hard angle he pulled out of outer zone three caused him to lose some of his momentum leaving outer zone three. And then he tried to make it.
Hey, and we're back. Sorry, Robbie farted and he knocked all the power out. <laughs> no, something, uh, I think a, a generator, something went down and uh, we lost some power, but we are back up. Really, really sorry about that. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. We are seeing uh, Yamashita and also Matsuyama waiting for their verdict on the run they just did. Very spectacular runs by both drivers. Here we go. Kimura going with Yamashita. Dai going with Yamashita. And Robbie Nishida, Sokoichi Yamashita is going to get the win. Moving on to the grade eight on the right side of the bracket. Yeah, it was a very, very close one. But unfortunately, Matsuyama, young Matsuyama is knocked out. Yamashita is on his path to do another win at this round. Or hopefully, uh, or not, uh, hopefully um, he could try to do a three-peat for the championship. And Matsuyama is knocked out. Second qualifier from uh, yesterday's qualified, but uh, great job. Great job, great yeah. car. Car is a beautiful build by oh, yeah, the, the Trail first Motor time. Apex Racing Team. I mean, amazing. For the first time in the series, um, you know, having to battle the champ uh, from last year is very, very hard. Um, and he, I mean, uh, in my opinion, that was really, really close. Too. But I ain't gonna lie, the, the team, our team, they definitely set the bar for how your hits should look. Oh, if yeah. you haven't seen it, go check it out. Go check out Daigo Saito's social media. Go check out the Formula Drift Japan social media. We have a little behind the scenes there. But it is insane, the setup they got going on in their pits. But right now, it looks like at the line, Kanta's ready to go for their one more time battle. That's the first battle we had in the top 16, moving on to the grade eight. It was between him and Ken Gushi. So we'll see here. I know Ken Gushi had, he had to take his uh, competition five minute timeout. In between his run, something was going wrong. Finicky with the engine, they got it squared away, got back out on the line, was able to run, but then Kanta made contact with Gushi in outer zone three. So we'll see here, and it, oh, looks like Kanta is going to go ahead and do a buy run. Robbie's getting more detail on what's going on with Gucci's car, and look at this. Here he is coming around outer zone two. Once again, doing a beautiful run. Keep in mind, Kanta was the number one qualifier. He's with the Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange. JZX 100 Chaser. Debuted it in Sugo last year, podium did it. We'll see what he's gonna do this year because it looks like he's on his way to move on in the great eight. So very unfortunate, mechanical, not sure if it's mechanical or what, but for Ken Gushi not to be able to come out and make an attempt to defeat Kanta is very rough, especially traveling all the way from the U.S. But it's pretty impressive. He's in the FD series in the U.S. and then he's out here battling it out in FDJ. So pretty awesome. And the wild thing is, is he's dealing with a right-hand drive car here while he's driving a left-hand drive car in the States. So, and it's a different power plant and it's a different chassis. So he's really adjusting himself and the b most impressive thing about this weekend for him is the fact that he only had minimal amount of time to practice with the car. He flew in, got stuck a little late, finally showed up, got a few practice runs in, and, and qualifying was literally like he wasn't even at a dozen runs yet. So very impressive to get to the top 16, unable to move on to the grade eight, but Kanta go ahead and solidify that last spot on the left side. We're still on the right side. Three more battles for the top 16 moving into the grade eight. Already at the line is Masanori Kohashi, number 27 with the Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange S15. Looks like he's ready to go and he'll be battling it out against Kazumi. Takahashi and his TMS Racing Team Cylon Tire. Beast of a beast. BMW. There's Kanta right there pulling back in. So 
So we're... Looks like Takahashi is ready to go. Just pulled up to the start line. Robbie is still trying to get the details of what happened in that last one more time and what was going on. So we'll see here. But it looks like these two drivers are ready to go. Kohashi in the lead, Takahashi in the chase. Sorry about the delay. Hopefully we'll get these cars started here soon. But man, the crowd that we have out here is phenomenal for the weather that we're having. You can see it's just not stopping. It is just downpouring on us this whole entire time. But thank you to the staff out here at Suzuka Twin. Make sure you join us next week. Next week we'll be doing the FDJ2 round. So FDJ2 is the feeder series of FDJ. Last year was the debut of the FDJ2 series. It's a Yokohama sponsored event. It feeds them into the FDJ series. And we have actually a, a few competitors here ready to go, ready to fight for their top spot here in round one. So while we're out here in the delay, where are y'all viewing from right now? And who all checked out the top 32? If you haven't seen the top 32 battles, you can still go check those out on the YouTube channel. Also, you can see qualifying on there. All, uh, the weather was actually very beautiful yesterday, so qualifying was pretty awesome. We went through 47 cars, total of 94 runs we watched yesterday. And cut it down to 32, so we lost 15 drivers yesterday due to qualifying. So there you go right there. Kanta seems pretty happy and okay with his situation right now and where he's at. Moving on to the grade eight. And Kanta will actually be going against uh, Yusuke Kusaba in his new GR86. So that'll be a very good battle because Kusaba has been very aggressive all weekend long. Also in the left side of the bracket, Suenaga is going to be going against Daigo Saito. So that's going to be a very interesting battle too, as well. And here you go. They're going to show another replay of the previous battle before they got put into the one more time situation. And that's where the contact was right there from Kanta being too aggressive with Kengushi. As for the other side of the bracket, Yamashita has already solidified his deal into the great eight. And who will he be going against? Kohashi or Takahashi. It's going to be a good battle between those two. And then we have two more battles to solidify our grade eight. And you can see right now the weather is not going to stop raining on us. There you go. You got Tom Saiba right there. They were talking on the PA system to the crowd. And they got the Japanese live stream going. And Tanaguchi right there eyeing us down. Also talking with Tom Saiba on the live stream. And then right next to him, you got Yochi Mamura. And then the other judge, and you got myself right here. The other judge was Dai Yoshihara. And you can see Robbie running around. He's up right now figuring things out. But thank you all out there for viewing, checking us out. We appreciate it. 
And yeah, this weather, we can't get over it. Luckily, we still are lively, trying to have a lively time, trying to stay awake, but definitely this weather is not helping us out. We're gonna check out the replay again. So let's see what else is going on. That's where the contact was right there. Looks like it bent something on his front right, but I don't have the details of what's going on. Robbie is now going to fill us in on what's going on. What's going on, Robbie? All right, so this is the first time this ever happened that the car, the, the run was over, but the car couldn't make it to the, uh, the, the one more time uh, because, of an, uh, before, because of a contact. Gucci's car, uh, they cannot come to the line because the, the damage on the front suspension was uh, severe and they weren't able to fix it by the time Kanta came to the line. Now, we gave them enough time and they were supposed to take care of it, but uh, since it's a new battle, um, usually it would be uh, Gucci moving on and not being able to battle the top eight because he was hit. But since the battle ended and it became a one more time and we had the verdict, we said, hey, they're going to have to do it one more time. Um, since Gucci's car, even though he got hit um, and he can't make it to the line, Kanta's car is ready to go and was able to make it to the line. Kanta's going to move on. It's, it's really unfortunate, but this doesn't happen that often. I've seen it before where one car gets hit on the first run and cannot make it to, um, you know, do the second run. Um, it's it's un It doesn't happen so often where the, the contact happens on the second run and... Uh, Usually the car that gets hit moves on, but this time Gucci spun behind uh, Kanta on his on their first run, so that's like a double zero where both of the chase cars, um, We're both good, of the chase yeah. cars uh, gets the both of the chase cars gets an incomplete. Oh, okay, yeah. But the lead only one car was able to lead because the other car got hit. Now we could look at. Um, the run up until Gucci uh, got hit, and we could compare that, uh, but most likely that was one more time, or that, that's why we kind of came up with the one more time right there. Um, and yeah, it's just, like, all I can say is it's unfortunate that he's not going to be able to uh, compete or move on uh, from the contact, so. Uh, but yeah, uh, this time it's going to be Kanta moving on. Unfortunate for um, Team Kazama Auto and uh, Kenshi Gucci. But hopefully they'll be back strong um, for the next round. Wow, that was a lot going on there. You, you should have seen it. Robbie was just running around, figuring things out. And then on top of that, he had to explain it to the crowd that's out here on what goes what went on. Because that's that doesn't happen often, like he says. I have yet to see it in the last two years. So we'll see what's going to pan out here. Who is going to go against Yamasha in the great eight? Is it going to be Kohashi or Taka? Takashi, Taka, Takahashi. See, there's Sorry for the wait, guys. Here we go. Takahashi uh, chasing down Kohashi. It's a lot going on there. Oh, look at that. Takahashi with the big angle. Look right. at Takahashi diving in right there. But Kohashi doing his thing, ripping around. Oh, hitting that slippery spot out of outer zone three. Takahashi right there trying to close that proximity after coming out of outer zone three. Yeah, so I think Takahashi did a great job at, at the initiation and in trying to stay close to the lead car. But after the transition, it looks like he cut in a little too much and he took a very, very smaller line and their line got crossed. Look at that angle uh, chasing down uh, Kohashi. But right here, does a switch back a little too early, puts himself way too small of a line and he catches up and he's trying to dig himself out of it. Now the line's crossed, so when Kohashi's taking off, Takahashi can't get back on throttle and move. Uh, so there's a gap created in between going towards the transition at outside zone four. Man, that was rough. This time it's gonna be Takahashi in the lead position and Kohashi is gonna be in the chase. Looks like they're ready to go. 
Takahashi in the lead in the BMW going against Kohashi in the S15. Let's see how they're going to rip through here. Look at them both coming in real aggressive. Not quite all the way into outer zone one, but here he is right here. Kohashi right on his fender, keeping that close proximity. Beautiful job. Look at that dialed in. Takahashi doing his thing. Ripping back around, but look at that. Kohashi keeping that nice close proximity to him, wow. trying to mimic every bit of what Takahashi Takashi has for Takahashi. him. I'm just throwing, I'm just messing it all up right here. <laughs> I should have just let the engine do all the talking. Here you go, here's the replay. Not quite able to get into outer zone one. It came a little bit late out of outer zone two there. Man, a lot of cars have been struggling leaving out of zone three right there, but look at the proximity by yeah, look Kohashi. Yeah, at, look at the way Kohashi is hunting down Takahashi. And uh, I would have to say, I mean, uh, that is very, very impressive. It looks like he is running a uh, similar line to the lead car. He's not cheating the line. He's not running a small line just to play catch up. And he's sticking with them uh, throughout the whole track. So very impressive chase uh, made by Kohashi. Here you go, side by side uh, comparison here. So let's see, look at the location where they do the initiation. Takahashi doesn't really clear the outside zone one. Both of them goes deep into the outside zone two. The switchback, it looks like um, Takahashi flicks it too hard, which places him a little too much of, it places him in a smaller line. And right there, there's a gap created from uh, Kohashi leading and Takahashi trying to give chase. And uh, looks like uh, Kohashi does not give him any space, doesn't let him run away. I like that side-by-side -side view right there. But here you go, Imamura going with Kohashi. Dai going with Kohashi and Robbie with Kohashi. Masanori Kohashi gets the win and will be moving on to the grade eight going against Yamashita. Wow, that's gonna be an interesting battle too. Um, we have the battles uh, all lined up. We got Kanta versus Kusaba. Um, Suenaga versus Saito. Third battle is gonna be Yamashita versus Kohashi. And who is going to be filling the spot for the grade eight the last yeah, the two spots yep. available. There you go. This is going to be another wild uh, tandem. This is going to be a wild battle. Exactly. Tanaka versus Saito because both these cars are very aggressive. So Tomoki Tanaka in the lead position while you got Yuji Saito in the chase. Both pretty wild drivers. I mean... It's going to be pretty interesting right here coming into outer zone one to outer zone two. They've both been very aggressive. Whoa. Look at that angle. Oh, too much by, oh man. Tanaka just did way too much there in the outer zone one. And oh, very unfortunate. Saito doing his thing, finishing off strong here. Told you he's wild. <laughs> man. Was not expecting that much out of him, especially that early coming into outer zone two. Like he just overshot he yeah, just the, too much. It didn't even look like he was close <laughs> to making it. Boom. Mega angle right there. All four tires out. It's an incomplete for Tanaka. And instantly Saito. As soon as Saito becomes the lead driver, that run is over. So that is an advantage that Saito has oh. as a, he's, it's going to come up. He's going to be the lead driver next and Tanaka is going to have to give chase. Now, now that Tanaka has nothing to lose because he already uh, went crazy on his uh, lead run at the first outer zone. Uh, this is going to be very interesting to see how, how much uh, pressure he could give to Saito. Yeah, that's a big thing. Saito is pretty aggressive himself, but is he going to throttle back just a little bit to get a solid lead run in, or is he going to push the limits kind of like what Kanta did? But we will find out here. Yuji Saito in the S15 powered by a VR. 
And then you got Tomoki Tanaka in his JZX100 powered by a 2J. So let's see how it's going to come out. Looks like Tanaka's ready to go, trying to jump on him. Here he is right here. Uh-oh. Saito coming in. Look at that. Real aggressive in outer zone one, taking out both pylons, coming in outer zone two, e-brake hold all the way through. Tanaka trying to keep that close proximity to him, but look at that nice transition by Saito coming around through the touch and go. Not bad by both drivers. It looks like Tanaka had to adjust himself just a little bit. And here he is finishing off strong and out. Oh, cut. <laughs> I thought contact was going to happen. Woo. Tanaka's like, you know what? You're gonna beat me, but I'm gonna finish first. <laughs> he tried to go through the finish line first. This is in a race, this is drifting, gotta remind Tanaka that. Uh, but hands down to both the drivers for trying really hard. Uh, looks like Saito did a solid lead run uh, where he uh, clears all the outside zones uh, fairly well. And uh, Tanaka trying to give him chase. Saito uh, holding good amount of angle. A little bit of a, a gap created going from outside zone three to four. And right here, Tanaka um, taking the in clip. <laughs> Diving straight <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, where the outside zone See, four was. From our angle, it almost looked like they were gonna make contact there. And I was like, oh, but next, he did No, there. guys, it doesn't look like it. Here Kenny, you go. Kenny just wanted it to be exciting. That's true. All three, all three judges right here for Yuji Saito in his S15. Let's see how he's gonna do in the grade eight, filling that last, well, not last, second to last, he's the, First qualifier, first qualifier, first winner for that battle coming up, our last battle for the grade eight. Yeah, so Yuji Saito is moving on to the grade eight. Let's see who he is going to go against. And good job by Tanaka, very exciting driver. A little bit more. Um, uh, I words, just, just say words. Yeah, just a lot more words. words. Yeah. But no, he's very. he's been aggressive all day long and I'm excited to see how he's gonna perform you know, maybe under dry conditions. So next up at the line already is gonna be another US driver out here in a left-hand drive. 350Z is gonna be Wataru Matsuyama going against Koji Nagase in the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles JZX100. There so, you go, Koji Nagase coming from FDJ2. First time in the FD Japan series versus the veteran also competing in the USA. Wataru Masuyama. Here he is, Masuyama coming in. Beautiful job in outer zone one. Oh, look at Nagase getting a little wild. Skating across into outer zone two, washing out there. And look at here, Masuyama finishing strong out of outer zone three, trying to catch a little grip out of outer zone three, but ripping through and finishing strong. Let's see how he's going to finish. Looks like he's taking a pylon for a ride all the way around and finishing strong to outer zone four. Yeah, unfortunately, Masayama actually had to knock his teammate out, teammate out, Yamanaka, in the top 32. Yeah, so Nagase kind of uh, just gave it away to Masayama because uh, didn't really put up much of a fight from the outside zone. One area initiation because got on the e-brake, car over-rotated, and... Even though Masayama did dip a tire, uh, which that's a bad habit because that almost got him the loss at the top 32 too, because he went off a little bit too much at outside zone two. Yeah, he took the pylon all the way around for a ride. Is that bonus points? Uh, actually, no, he's gonna have to pay for that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> So yeah, he's driving that 350Z powered by a 2J. But let's see if he could carry it on while Koji Nagase is gonna be in the lead this time. Nagase definitely has to make up for that spin out that he had in outer zone one. Let's see if he can hold through here in the lead position. Masayama right there being very aggressive. Nagase just trying to figure his car out to dial it into this outer zone one. It looks like uh -oh, struggling. What happened? Coming around to outer zone three, not too bad out of outer zone three. Let's see how they finish off. The first part was very rough for, oh. Nagase with a huge correction right there 
in that touch and go region. Looks like he straightened up a little for a lot. And man, Masuyama just doing his thing, dancing behind him. All right, so Nagase, it looked like he's being very, very careful because uh, he did do a spin. He did spin out behind Masayama. But Masayama right here, man, what a small line. Uh, he wasn't able to go anywhere near the outside zone too. But Nagase is sitting on an incomplete that looks like he straightens pretty hard right there. Uh, right at the touch and go area and uh, unfortunately that's probably going to be another incomplete for the lead driver um, so uh, that's pretty much it but I gotta say you know for uh, Nagase first time coming into FD Japan uh, from FDJ2 uh, he's been doing a great job he did qualify 11th uh, not bad at all compared to you know uh, having to qualify within top 32 within the 47 drivers uh, that we did have for qualify yesterday. So uh, great job by Nagase. But Here this time, it looks like Wataru Masuyama is going to be moving on to the grade eight. There you go. Our last slot filled by Masuyama. He'll be going against Yuji Saito. Yeah, let me go ahead and read off the battles that we have for the grade eight. First battle is going to be car number 57, Kanta versus car number 77, Kusaba. Second battle is going to be car number 31, Suenaga versus car number 87, Saito. Third battle is going to be car number eight, Yamashita versus car number 27, Kohashi. And the last battle of the grade eight is uh, car number 23, Saito versus car number 530, Masayama. Now there's two Saitos in the grade eight. One is Daigo Saito and the other one is Yuji Saito. So um, this is a... Interesting mix-up because uh, Kanta, very young driver, also been on the podium a few times here in FDJ, is going against Kusaba, who is figuring out their, his car, um, coming in with a new car. Uh, but before we go into that battle, uh, give us, uh, we'll be right back. Yokohama. The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. to 
ultimate lubricant. Mortis. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るための What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Made in Japan. Welcome back. We made it here into the grade eight. We are for the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan 2022 season round one here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. It looks like Kanta is ready to go for the first battle of our grade eight. And he'll be going against Yusuke Kusaba in his GR86. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, that was a long, uh, or for me, it felt like a long uh, top 16 because there are things happening <laughs> during the event that doesn't really happen so often, and we have to react as soon as possible so we don't keep everybody uh, waiting. So, sorry, really sorry about that, but, um, uh, yeah, we're back. It's grade eight, finally. So Kanta is going to be in the lead. Kusaba is going to be in the chase here. Who is going to move on to the final four? In the silence with the suspense for the first one, Kanta has been very consistent with all of his runs. How is he going to perform here with the lead? But at the same time, Kusaba has been doing a phenomenal job here in his new GR86. And here he is diving in on him on outer zone two. Can he carry it through? But Kanta once again doing his magic and making things happen, taking care of all the zones. But look at that. Look no, at that proximity Kusaba's doing. Are we sure this is the same driver from last year? Because he is doing a phenomenal job in the chase position right here, keeping that close proximity to Kanta, especially the conditions of the track. Yeah, so these are the types of battles that I don't mind watching over and over, but uh, looks like Kanta, looks like Kanta's doing a good job as a lead driver. Doesn't flick it as hard, but uh, he does initiate where he's supposed to. And now Kusaba, following him, staying on the line he's supposed to be on. I like that where he's not digging in and trying to cut close or cut cut to a smaller line. 
and giving and, and keeping pressure on uh, the lead driver. Good proximity by Gustavo and also a good lead run uh, by uh, Kanta. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting when the tables turn here and uh, Kusaba is going to be in the lead position while Kanta's in the chase because so far while Kanta has been in the chase position he's been very aggressive almost at some points too aggressive coming into outer zone three so we'll see how he handles himself going against Kusaba who does feel very comfortable behind the wheel of this new GR86 built by Cusco Racing. Yeah very impressive car because this is the debut of this car uh, going against Ah, oh, look at that. Kanta. Let's see if he can hold on. Coming in around right there, trying to keep that close proximity. But man, Kusaba filling all the zones beautifully. Here he is coming, ripping right past us through the touch and go. And Kanta right there on his right rear fender, keeping it nice and close. Transitioning around to outer zone four. And man, oh. Like you said, I can watch this over and over and over. But both, I must say, both chase positions, they both had their, their little wa uh, bobble, I guess you could say. Yeah, they did. But uh, right here, I guess the initiation, too, very similar. Uh, not a fast rate to angle, but a uh, good job by both drivers. Both filling the zones, both chasing uh, on the same line in the same position. And it looks weird because there's parts that one car is closer to the other, uh, when they switch around, like right here, a um, little bit of a shallower angle by uh, Kanta uh, chasing Kusaba, but definitely not making it easy. This is our first battle in the grade eight. Is one of these drivers, did they do good enough to make it to the final four, or are we going to see a one more time battle? And here we go, side by side. Man, this is a this is gonna be a lot easier for us to make a decision. Here we go. See, very similar, similar entry by both cars. And it looks like Kanta's slightly closer. Yeah, it looks it's like, hard to it tell. It looks like Kusaba dips a tire. Right here, it looks like Kusaba's closer. And uh, Kanta gets closer towards the end. Yeah, this, right is, this there, is interesting. Right there. I'm okay with it one more time, but let's see what these judges think. Who is going to move on, or are we going to see this battle again? That was a beautiful battle. That's what I'm talking about, especially the conditions we're in. For them to keep that close proximity, the amount of spinning out we've seen, it's, it's insane. And it's a lot of trust by both these drivers from one another. So let's see, waiting for the judges to get their decisions in. Kanta and the JZX100 Chaser, the Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange vehicle debuted in Sugo, and then you got the new debut today by Yusuke Kusaba in the Team Cusco Racing GR86. And Kusaba said he's been very impressed by this vehicle, and you can see by the way he is driving it and handling it, he is making it his own. All right, so um, we all input. There you go. We're uh -oh. going to Kanta for one. One more time for the other judge, and Robbie is going to go with a one more time, and that's what I'm talking about, a one more time battle between these two because it's not going to make it easy that easy coming into the Final Four. No, I understand that uh, Kanta's chase uh, was a little bit more aggressive, um, and uh, I was looking at the lead runs. Uh, the lead runs were pretty much similar, and the chase runs, there were parts where Kusawa was closer, and there were parts where Kanta was closer. The biggest mistake that Kanta made when he was behind is Kanta making an entry next to Kusaba, so he totally misses outside zone one. Yeah. If Kanta made it through outside zone one, because you're supposed to mimic the line that the lead car is driving. So if Kanta would have went through there, I would have definitely gave it to Kanta. Yeah, but till then, we'll come back to them. They definitely showed us and they set the bar for this grade eight final four battle. Here they are coming in next is gonna be Leading the pack or leading this run is going to be Daigo Saito in his GR86 going against Naoto Suenaga in his 370Z powered by a VR. I don't think it's a 38, it's a 4.1 now, right? I think so. 
It's probably like a four liter or 4.1 or 4.3. So let's see how they're gonna do here. There you go, Daigo Saito leading and Naoto Suenaga giving chase. Looks like Daigo's pulling a little bit. Here you go, Suenaga's gonna try to dial in and close that proximity, but man, Daigo doing his thing, covering the prox or the outer zones right here. And look at Suenaga trying to dial in right here and close that proximity to Daigo. And Daigo's just trying to carry through out of outer zone three. And man, Suenaga trying to mimic every bit of Daigo's move and finishing real strong with that proximity right there. Nice Once finish. Once again, very good job by both drivers. Very close tandem. Man, I think all the top eight uh, tandems are just all close battles, but check this out. Daigo Saito does a good job at initiation, but he does miss half of uh, the outside zone two. Doesn't go in deep enough from the beginning, kind of goes into it later. Uh, does a great job at outside zone three. Suenaga not giving him any space to run away, but also since they are on the smaller line, they won't be able to go through the touch and go. And uh, Saito finishing off the track, uh, but Suenaga being right there behind him. So uh, great job by both drivers. And it's going to be very interesting when Daigo is now going to be in the chase position while Suenaga is going to be in the lead. Wow. Very, very impressive driving that, uh, that's been going on here uh, since the top 16 started. Hands down to all these drivers and hands down to all these people out here actually cheering them on, even though it's raining. And thank you for you guys watching. Here is a second battle uh, between Suenaga versus Saito. Daigo's going to be in the chase while Suenaga's going to be in the lead. And here they are coming up to outer zone one. And look at Suenaga getting a little crazy here. And Daigo right there keeping that close proximity like he always does with his aggressive driving. And Suenaga, oh, diving right in on him right there. Beautiful job. Is he gonna be able to hold it all the way through into this touch and go? Oh, oh. correction by Suenaga right there. And way to make it interesting right here to the finish by both drivers. Ooh. Man, that might be the uh, factor uh, to what's gonna happen in the results here. Let's go ahead and check out the replay. I wanna see that one more time. Now, Suenaga is leading. Saito not giving him any space from entry. It looks like he has more angle. Suenaga does a good job uh, filling outside zone two and three. Oh, tire off right there and right there. That correction right there. It's all down to the fine details of making the right decision for these judges. And man, something that kind of that obvious when they're doing so good is gonna really change the name of how this is how the shifting is going to happen for the drivers oh man i mean i don't know if that's what he was shifting or something cut off or something but i don't know i want to look at it again because it almost looked like daigo had go. a little contact to him no it the he almost hit him or he hit him after that Oh, okay, the correction. Uh, the, the little bobble that he had. But, I mean, even down to this small bobble that they had, um, it could be a huge deciding factor um, to the calls that we made, too. So the judges are looking at this carefully. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, I like this, though, the, the different dynamics and all the vehicles that are coming out battling right now, but the aggressive driving we're seeing about seeing – from these drivers, especially in the conditions. It's insane. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Hands down to these drivers because, I mean, Suenaga, this is the first time competing in his vehicle. Uh, Saito, this is also the first time he actually just debuted this car here uh, because he's never competed in this vehicle uh, previously. I think he drives uh, GR Supras, but a GR86. I mean, a GR86, it looks like... Uh, it looks like he's liking it a lot. Um, oh, yeah. His teammate Matsuyama is doing very well as well, so. It's, it's hard to tell, though. He does phenomenal job driving pretty much most vehicles that he drives. You're so, right. Here You're he right. is. Here's oh, another view. driver did, but there's slightly more angle in the chase car, but I think Suenaga does a good job um, filling the outside zone one. 
dips a tire there, outside zone two. And right there. Oh, yeah. That bobble probably caused that small contact that I think they might have touched a little, but I think it was caused because of that correction right there. But yeah, like we were talking about, Suenaga was in an S15 last year, and he actually sustained really bad damage in Sugo. Went what, straight into the wall pretty much after the touch and go. Able to get it back together, and he still podiumed somehow in the next following uh, round. So let's see what Imamura has to say. Daigo's going to get it. Dai with Daigo, and Robbie with Daigo. So Daigo Saito is going to be the first one moving on to the final four. Wow. What a way and what that, a statement to come into exactly Formula Drift the, Japan. The ex ex FD USA champ. He seemed like he struggled uh, driving in FD Japan before. He did a few rounds a couple years ago, and he's been absent since. Uh, but now he's back, and he's going full, um, beating Suenaga, which is one of the uh, top contenders we have because I think he finished within the top 10 uh, from last uh, oh, yeah. year. And, uh, yeah, he's in a different car, too. So it might take him a little bit of time to get used to this 370Z. But I know um, Team Orange uh, Kumakubo brought that car to the podium last year at Fuji too so I'm pretty sure that they'll be able to figure it out and Suenaga should get comfortable in that car real soon. But next battle coming up we're going to go to the right side of our bra bracket it's going to be Masanori Kohashi going against the champ himself Koichi Yamashita. Can Koichi Yamashita hold on and move into the final four to solidify his victory here once again at Suzuka Twin Circuit for round one. And here they are coming in, and look at Kohashi, nice and aggressive, but look at that. Yamashita keeping that, oh, looks like he gave him a little bit right there in that transition, coming around to outer zone three. Kohashi doing a beautiful job. Looked like he dipped a tire or two right there in outer zone three, but filled all of it. And Yamashita trying to close back that proximity he had early on in the track. Wow, very impressive driving once again. All I keep seeing is wow. Maybe I'll come up with a new word. Whoa. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whoa. So let's go ahead and check this out. The replay. Kohashi doing a great job. He's like on the verge, like the line uh, on the line. Dips the tire, hits the cone um, on the outside zone one. Great job outside zone two. Right there. He's like on the line at outside zone yeah. three, two. Kind of goes out wide, uh, but right here he gives Creates a little bit of a gap in between uh, Yamashita and him. Yamashita trying to hold on, but I have to say that Yamashita's diving in and staying super close to him at the entry was pretty amazing. Also, um, you know, I probably said this like 5,000 times, but um, 5,000 times, but uh, you know, you have to have a great lead run to have a good chase. So uh, I think this kind of proves it. And I think this past couple battles, that kind of it kind of proved that theory too. Yeah, Kohashi definitely set the bar in that lead position. But I want to know what Yamashita is going to do in his lead with Kohashi on the chase. Because it looks like Kohashi is trying to make a statement here in the first round of FDJ. He's trying to make it up to that podium spot, but he has to defeat the champ himself. And here they are, Yamashita in the lead, Kohashi in the chase. Coming in real aggressive into outer zone one. Not too bad by Yamashita, but look at that. Kohashi right behind him, right in that left quarter panel. Swinging back around to outer zone three. Yamashita filling all real deep into outer zone three. Beautiful job, but look at that. Kohashi not giving him any room to breathe. And that right there is a beautiful tandem battle between these two amazing drivers. Let's check this replay out. All right, so let's go ahead and check out this replay. I Very beautiful job by both drivers. Yamashita taking the outside line. Kohashi right on his door, not letting him go. And literally mimicking every, every move he's making. Right there, Kohashi uh, at the transition. Not a clean way to make a transition, but um, yeah, he is not giving him any space at all. Man, the level we're at right now. That's very interesting. This is the first grade eight battle on the right side of our bracket. 
man, who is going to get it here? Is it going to be Yamasha or Kohashi? Or are we going to see a one more time between these two? And like I was saying before, Yamasha did lock in the win last year here at Suzuka Twin. Is he going to be able to do a repeat this year? We'll here have we to go. see. Hopefully, here we go. We're going to get a side-by-side -side view right here. And going to see right there. Nice initiation by both drivers. Kohashi making it to the outside zone. Both drivers doing a good job. And it looks a little bit more like Kohashi is mimicking Yamashita a little bit better and he is a little bit closer in proximity uh, throughout the track. But I would have to say this is going to be a very, very close call because uh, both of the drivers are doing such a great job. Yeah, we're going to have to see here. That's a, that's a tough run. Yochi Mamura is going to go with Kohashi. Dai is going to go with Kohashi. And Robbie Nishida is going to go co with Kohashi. So Masanori Ho Kohashi is going to get the win and moving on for the first part of the final four on the right side of the bracket. Look at this. First time uh, in Formula of Japan, and he's moving on to the top four. And he, and he defeated the and champ. And he just defeated the champ, yeah. But it was a very close call because Yamashita did a great job uh, leading and chasing down this young driver. Now we have two drivers that are in it uh, to win it. Kohashi is in the top four. Who is Kohashi going to be facing against? Is it going to be Yuji Saito or Wataru Masuyama versus the other side of the... Uh, bracket. We still have Kanta uh, going against Yusuke Kusaba. The winner of that will be going against Daigo Saito, who has already made his spot into the top four um, here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. And there you go. Masuyama is going to be in the lead position while we have Yuji Saito in the chase. And we were saying once before, Yuji is kind of a wild driver. He has a very aggressive approach when it comes to being in the chase and in the lead. We're going to see how he's going to handle Masuyama in the lead position. Here they are coming down the strep into the 3-2-1. Nice aggressive approach by both drivers into outer zone one. Look at that, Saito coming in, diving in a little bit, missing outer zone two. Masuyama doing his thing. Beautiful job in outer zone three. Oh, coming way out for outer zone three. Is it going to affect him here through the touch? Touch and go area, but oh, Saito coming in a little bit too much angle, leaving that touch and go to outer zone four. Yeah, there are parts uh, where Masayama is filling the outside zones very well, and Saito looks like he's coming a little short on the line, uh, chasing down Masayama. But let's go ahead and check out this replay. So there you go. I like the way uh, Saito does a, a very uh, wild flick behind Masayama, but he does not fill the outside zone one or try to stay on Masayama's line. They both do a great job on outside zone B, but right here, Masayama creates a slight uh, separation there. And right there, it looks like Saito slightly over rotates before the transition. So he had to make a weird transition going to outside zone four, which made him um, get back on the wrong line, not being able to get on the line that Masayama cleared um, on the outside zone four. So here we are, Masayama's gonna be in the chase this time while Yuji Saito is gonna be on the lead. We said it before, Saito's pretty aggressive, but I'm not gonna lie, Masayama has been definitely on point this whole entire weekend. Yeah, and uh, in a new car, and that's Opposite a left hand side, drive. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, very impressive. Now, Saito has been driving this car for a couple of years now, but boom, nice flick right there, nice initiation. Oh, I see him getting caught up there in outer zone one, but here he is coming back around, trying to close that proximity oh. gap. Oh, and Saito having a little hiccup there in outer zone three. Masuyama diving in right here, coming into outer zone four, finishing strong. Not bad right there by Masuyama trying to finish off strong in the outer zone four. 
Yeah, I would have to say that the lead run wasn't as clean as, as it should be. It was a little bit sloppy here and there. And uh, Masayama was uh, not super aggressive on the, uh, prox on the proximity, but he tries to stay as close as possible. Now look at this, uh, Saito makes it all the way out to the outside zone and he kind of does an adjustment because he was already one tire off and uh, he tried to uh, make it look, look good uh, by doing it, but uh, the transition right here too, it looks like he doesn't want to go all the way out to angle, so he has to kind of slow down and make sure that the car doesn't dart out. Um, outside of outside zone four. Uh, but Masayama kind of hanging back, doing his own thing, uh, keeping uh, Saito within proximity and trying to mimic his uh, every move. Both of the cars, when they're on the, no, both of the cars chasing, giving chase, they, they are not doing as good of a job that they should be around outside zone two because it looks like they are coming a little short on the line. Uh, but let's see, go, let's go ahead and take everything in consideration and see uh, who the winner is or if it's a one more time. So let's see this side by side view, comparing the lead to lead, chase to chase between these two drivers. Who is gonna be moving on to go against Ko Kohashi in the final four? Very similar in the lead. Like you said before, Saito adjusts him a little bit because he's already dipping a tire out. Yeah, there you go. That mistake that Saito made too. Yeah. So I'm seeing two things that uh, Saito had to make an adjustment um, at the outside zone three and also at the transition where he threw a little bit more angle uh, that he was anticipating. But... Here we go, Yochi Mamura, oh, one, one more, more time. time. Dai going with a one more time, and Robbie has Masuyama for his victory, but we're gonna get a one more time battle between these two amazing drivers. Yeah, so it's a one more time, and I really agree on it. Um, like I was saying, I took it a little more heavy where uh, Saito had to make an adjustment at the outside zone three, and he also dipped the tire out there, and he had to take a little bit of angle out, and also uh, at the transition where he threw a little bit too much angle where he couldn't make his, uh, when he made the transition, he came a little short on uh, distance to get back on the line where Masayama was supposed to be. Uh, but yes, Masayama didn't fill the outside zone one as good as he should have, and uh, yeah, I, I agree on the one more time right here. So uh, let's go ahead and see uh, both the drivers duke it out uh, to see who's going to be the winner. But before we go into that one more time, we're going to go back to another one more time that we just had uh, with Kanta and uh, Kusaba. So we're going back to the left side of our bracket. This was our first start of our grade eight. Now, which one of these is going to move on to the final four and going to battle against Daigo Saito? So here we are, Kanta in the lead, Kusaba in the chase. Kusaba's been doing a phenomenal job in his brand new GR86. How is he going to feet right here for this battle against Kanta? One more time battle between these two. Here they are ripping around out of the Look at Kusaba diving in on him. Wow. Being very aggressive. And oh man. Look at that, beautiful job. Let's see how he's gonna dive in on him here into outer zone four. And there he is right there coming in outer zone four. Beautiful job by Kusaba. And once again, Kanta doing his thing in the lead position. And like Robbie always says, and we can keep repeating, when you see a good tandem battle, it's all due to a good lead to have a good chase. Here they are right here on the replay. Yeah, I have to say, I have to say that Kusaba the, it's a big difference from him driving the Supra, just as you brought up many times. This is like a new, new him, because this is a, he's he's on the right line. Right here, he gets a little smaller, but he gets on the right line, and uh, he's, he's on a smaller line at the outside zone four, but when he is initiating outside zone one, outside zone two, look at that. He doesn't get too small on the line, to keep the proximity. He stays on the line he's supposed to. Look at that attack right there. Matching the angle and matching uh, the line. But at the same time, like I said, the lead driver Kanta, um, he's an expert as well. So he's the one who's giving uh, Kusaba the chance to give him a good tandem. So both drivers, hands down, uh, what a great battle. Well, we'll see here on the second half of this battle while Kanta is gonna be in the chase and Kusaba is gonna be on the lead this time. So here we are, you have the Team Cusco Racing, 
GR86, while we have Ling Long Tire Drift, Team Orange is JZX100, Chaser. Here they are coming through, outer zone one. Not bad by both, look at that, Conton staying in right there, close to his inside left. Moving around, shifting into outer zone three. Kusaba filling all of outer zone three, but look at that, proximity Conte is keeping with him. And here they both come. Oh. Is he gonna be able to hold on to, oh! oh! And Kusaba just over rotating into the finish right there after outside zone four. Wow. All right, so I have to say, minus the over rotation that I saw, I like the way Kanta uh, initiated. Uh, Kusaba does it a little bit more slower, but the proximity, uh, I have to say, Kanta has one up on uh, Kusaba right here. He's staying closer throughout the track. Now he does miss the uh, touch and go, but right here too. He dives right in and ah, you're supposed to drift through and end it by straightening uh, through the finish line, but it looks like Kusaba over rotated. But I have to say that, man, what a good fight. Uh, these two drivers, very impressive uh, driving right here, even though the uh, condition wild. of the track is horrible and it's wet, uh, yeah. Just watching that over and over and over, it's just... Like, I mean, I was telling the uh, the other judges about um, these two drivers. Let's go ahead and... And you can uh, see yeah. right there, Kanta is going to get the win here. Yusuke Kusaba did a phenomenal job. Uh, hands down, he has stepped his game up this year. But, oh, man, man, Kanta like, is... Like, no joke, I was like, hey, is that Kusaba really driving? It's that different. Um, him, him and his new car is definitely a big threat to all the drivers in the series. It really is, and I, I don't know what it is. At first, he told me the powerhouse under the hood is a lot better. He's got a 3.6 under there now, um, 2J. But right now, horsepower doesn't really matter. I mean, this is yeah, raining the rain now. too, because he, is, uh, he knew how to control the car like it's his legs and hands and uh, feet or whatever you but, want to call but it. But, man, once again, Conta, but yeah, that kid. Oh, yeah, good job to both the drivers. Good job, and uh, uh, Kusaba's weekend is over. But um, him make, putting up a good fight with Conta um, this far up in the, in the ladder it's, it's very, very impressive, so I'm looking forward to a great season for Kusaba. Uh, but congratulations to Kanta. Moving on to the final four, and he will be facing uh, the ex-FD USA champ, car number 87, Daigo Saito. Yeah, and both of them are pretty much precise on their chase runs, so we're going to see. That's going to be a good battle between Daigo and uh, Kanta. So for the standings now, like we just said, Kanta and Daigo is going to be the first battle for the final four, and then you have Kohashi, but who is he gonna be going against? As you see this replay once again, who's gonna go against Kohashi? Is it gonna be Yuji Saito or Masuyama? Masuyama's trying to make his trip from the US out here, well worth it, trying to move into the final four and take this podium here at the round one of Suzuka Twin Circuit for Formula Drift Japan. Well, so there's one more slot left, but within the three slots, there's uh, two Team Orange drivers. Oh, you're right. Yep. So we'll see how this comes out. You can see the fans fighting the weather. So look at this uh, Kanta uh, qualifying first. He already put himself on the podium, so he's promised the podium regardless what happens after this because he qualified first and he out-qualified everybody, so he's guaranteed a podium. Now, depending on who makes it into the um, final four, is it going to be Saito or is it going to be Masayama? Here you go. That's Kusaba he right looks, there. He, he looks, looks very happy, happy yep. with his uh, performance. Oh, I would be too if I drove like that. I mean, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> I mean, he should be proud of himself because, yeah, getting knocked out at the grade eight. He said he's going to try harder next time. So, hey, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because uh, he did deliver this time. So very uh, impressive driving by uh, Kusaba. 
There you go, the Man, team Cusco the team. guys. I mean, the team are probably happy uh, because of the performance. I know their drivers, um, Kaneda and also uh, Minoa, uh, was knocked out early uh, today. And uh, Kusaba was basically carrying the team, but he made it all the way out to the grade eight. And this is round one, so there's five more rounds uh, left for these drivers to uh, co compete for the championship. So let's see. Waiting for this next battle to get warmed up. This was our one more time battle between Yuji Saito. Yeah, you know what's what? interesting? What's up? The next battle, uh, depending on who wins, Kanta's been on the podium. Yes. Daigo Saito's been on the podium in the U.S. Not in FD Japan, but in the U.S. Obviously winning the championship uh, back in the days. Um, Kohashi, first time in FD Japan, but he's a champion. Um, he's a champion from uh, D1 Grand Prix from 2019. So these are... These are like a bunch of champions and podium winners. Now, Masayama also made a pod he made podium uh, previously in FD Japan too, and he's a you know one of the contenders in the FD USA series. But Saito, he has never podiumed yet. Yeah, and he and actually, I don't think he's ever made it to the uh, final four yet either. He was actually debuting this car last year here, but was unable to make it through Tech. Yeah, exactly. So this is going to be very interesting. You know, hey, there's uh, there's my um. There's my brother uh, from the tech side of it. I call him Robbie Yoshida because he's very, he's like me, but older. That means he's really old because I'm pretty old too. But to the right, there's Kuroda. Um, he is a starter. And facing his back to us, I don't know who that is. I, I got I to, maybe it's Daichang. But, I think it is Daichang. Yeah, but uh, uh, very... Very um, chill, fun group of people that we uh, get to deal with at oh, the yeah. track. The um, FDJ, the FDJ family is very, ex very fun to be around. I'm yeah, not gonna even, lie. Yeah, I'm happy to be here to be around them. And even if you've never met them too, the Formula Drift USA family too. I mean, uh, shout out to everybody who is out there. Uh, miss everybody out there, but uh, a lot of cool people. Everybody uh, very passionate of uh, this sport. And uh, all we're trying to do is make this sport grow exactly. um, so we could reach out to you so you can enjoy watching some cool drifting. Now, we will be watching some cool drifting in just one second while they're taping up uh, Masayama's front bumper on his 350Z. Um, that is powered by 2J. And next to him is Saito, Yuji Saito, silently waiting. And you know what? Thank you to the fans. I see you guys thanking us out here. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all's support. So chiming in on us in the group chat we appreciate that and you know hands down we're here for y'all we're trying to do our best we ain't the best but you know if you don't like this yeah, we're the best <laughs> robbie likes himself a lot here we are coming in hopefully our final battle into the grade eight to the final four and here we are saito being very aggressive there, taking a different line kind of shooting in but here they are coming around to outer zone three and man masayama Definitely filling these zones. Loves the way the Z is performing because, man, he's doing a phenomenal job. And Saito just trying to do his thing. And, woo! Huge aggressive angle kickback yeah. on that outer zone four. So compared to the earlier battle, this one especially looks like Saito uh, is making more mistakes uh, throughout the runs. Let's go ahead and check out the replay one more, or once right here. Masayama making initiation, not all the way out of the outside zone one, but he does go outside zone two fairly. Uh, Saito kind of cutting in, taking a smaller line at the outside zone one to two area. Right here, it looks like they're getting pretty close, but a little bit of a gap created afterwards by Masayama. And right here, Saito kind of diving in with shallower angle, trying to gain angle towards the end, going towards outside zone four. So he doesn't feel outside zone four either. So, uh, right there, a big wobble by uh, Saito giving chase, chasing down Masayama's car. Right there, Masayama, very stable, um, and he's just doing what he's supposed to do, um, taking the outside line, filling the zones, and doing what he's supposed to do as a lead driver. And right there, Saito kind of cutting in, 
uh, taking a smaller line. But now we're going to have to see because this is drifting. Now we're going to see Saito lead Masayama and see how well Masayama could give chase. So the tables have turned now. Yuji Saito is going to be in the lead this time. Masayama in the chase. It's crazy because Masayama hasn't had a lot of practice sessions in this 350Z, but here he is coming in. Very aggressive. Oh, almost the same line that Saito did in, in, in his chase run. Is he going to make it up here coming into outer zone three? Closing that proximity to Saito right there, but Saito just trying to carry on. Through the touch and go here and reaching all the way out to outer zone four, finishing strong between both drivers. Wow, so the lead run that Saito just laid down is very good. Let's go ahead and check this out. The initiation and entry, the entry is very similar right there. Saito does a better job on outside zone one, fills the zone, outside zone two, right there. Masayama dips the tire and he does make an awkward entry going from outside zone one to two because he doesn't clear outside zone one. He does like a side-by-side -side initiation. Saito does a good job right here, gets in a little bit deeper than Masayama did earlier. Uh, but I would have to say Masayama has better proximity. But at the same time, I would have to say uh, Saito's lead run looks a little bit more stronger than Masayama's. Now, we have to go back to look and think about it because Saito did have a wobble. And there's a few things that he did make. Uh, he did make or some of the mistakes that he made as a chase driver as well. So this is going to be a very hard one for us. Yeah, it is. Uh, on top of that, this is their one more time battle. So, and these drivers are not making it easy for the judges for this last final four spot we have on the bracket. Right now, the left side has already been solidified with Kanta and Daigo Saito gonna battle it out for the end. But who is gonna go against Kohashi? Here it is, Yuji Mamura going with Saito, Dai going with Saito. So it looks like Yuji Saito is going to get the win. Robbie wanted a one more time battle between the two, but unfortunately, Wataru Masuyama is not going to make it into the final four. But beautiful driving all weekend long by Masuyama. Yeah, so Yuji Saito makes it into the final four and defeats Masuyama, who is a current FD USA driver. Very impressive job by Saito. What was your take on that? You wanted a one more time battle between the two. Yeah, um, I know that Masayama's line wasn't too good when he was chasing, but I figured that Saito's line chasing Masayama was similar. The big problem was Saito making that big bobble and being, not being steady um, and taking a very smaller line at outside zone two. The transition after the transition, he dove straight in, uh, going towards outside outside zone four, and it wasn't like he was like super close to him either. So uh, those are the two big areas that I looked at um, as a mistake that was made by Saito. But uh, both of the other judges went with Saito, and I agree. Um, if I really, really, really had to pick, it probably would have been Saito. So that is good uh, where he is moving on. So now... We're at the semifinals here. Final four, it's going to be Kanta already at the line against Daigo Saito. Kanta's going to be in the lead position while Daigo is going to be in the chase. Daigo rocking his brand new Trail Motor Apex Racing GR86. While you have Kanta in his Ling Long Tire Race, uh, Team Orange, JZX100. We were just talking about this. this is going to be a solid tandem battle between these two. Man. So you got the young driver versus the vet, the ex champ. So here we are coming in right now. Kanta right there. Nice job initiating into outer zone one. But look at that Daigo keeping that close proximity like he's been doing all day long. And Kanta just not phased by it. Completing Whoa. every single one of these zones. Beautiful job by Kanta. Coming up to this touchy go right here. And oh, that is some beautiful Man. driving right there. That's almost a textbook 
chase run by Daigo Saito. And you know what? I have to tell you, I was a little worried because his style has always been diving in more forward and not being able to stay on the same line as the lead driver. But he's doing it really well. He builds outside zone two fairly good. And right here, he copies every move that Kanta is making. And look at that. He's on the outside zone. He's clearing the outside zone, being that close to the lead driver. That's exactly what the judges want to see. And also, um, this must be the 5,000th time I've said, but yes, Kanta is doing an immaculate job leading uh, Daigo to do a great tandem. So both drivers, hands down, a little bit of a, a shallow move by Daigo right there. But, man, this is impressive. I just can't see, and I just can't wait uh, to see how they're going to do when they switch places. Exactly. Kanta is definitely going to bring the fire against Daigo. And he know, he he already knows Daigo is a phenomenal driver, phenomenal lead driver. So Kanta is definitely going to put it all out there. Yeah, so starting this year, Daigo is with Yokohama Tire. So he's on the brand new Advan 809s. Ooh, Kanta like is that. on... The Ling Long tires. And this is their first season in FDJ. Exactly. And it looks like both of the tires are doing really well in the rain. Especially Ling Long. They're, uh, they got two cars in the mix right now. So we'll see how it's going to pan out for these two. I've already, we've already seen one battle with Kanta in the lead. Phenomenal job. And Daigo on a nice chase position. But how is it going to go with Daigo in the lead and Kanta doing it uh, in the chase? All right, looks like they're lined up, ready to go. Let's not get a pylon touch here. Let's make this happen. And here they are coming through the chicane, coming to the 3-2-1. Let's Daigo go. taking it, coming in. Subtle oh. machines and taking it. Oh, came in too hot. Oh, no. Both cars coming off. I had a feeling. <laughs> and then Daigo just spraying all over Kanta. Look at Kanta's car now just just. I had a feeling that Daigo was going to come in and do something crazy, but not like that crazy. Man. And what's crazy is Kanta followed right behind him. Here we go. Let's see this replay. And I like the way the trunk just like goes bloop. So that's an incomplete anyway. So I think well, the I think the trunk latch got open yeah, because he hit, he hit that. Pylon, yeah. yeah. That's right. And he was like, uh, I got to tell, we got to remind Daigo that, you know, going off-roading, this is a different sport. You know, he's going to have to keep it within uh, the track. Ooh. It almost fits the sponsor with the, you know, whole trail motor apex racing. It just sounds like a off-road racing team right there. <laughs> Next time uh, you're, we're gonna see the car is like five inches off the ground or five <laughs> inches uh, wheel gap and some uh, knobby tires on there. Uh, but thank you, shout out to the trackside workers at Suzuka Twin Circuit, supporting us, doing a great job, uh, making sure that the track is drivable on uh, uh, for the drivers. And but there you go, all three judges going for Kanta. Kanta getting the win, moving on to the finals. Yes. Daigo did a phenomenal job all weekend, but unfortunately won't be able to move on after the uh, off-road show he gave him. But man, Kanta's got some cleaning to do on his car now. <laughs> all right, so it looks like Daigo did a little bit too much at entry. Um, but now um, this is kind of interesting to see because now that we've been, I think this is like the eighth year or so for the Formula Drift Japan to be uh, going in Japan. But Daigo Saito has been absent from the series, and this year he is in full. Um, and they came in strong because, you know, the presence they have in the pits, uh, you'll be able to see it on some of the social media later. Um, but he came in full swinging. And look at this. He made it all the way to the uh, final four on the first round. Um, so very impressive uh, driver. And also it's making me look at the car. GR uh, the GR86 must be something... Uh, to look forward to because I mean all the GR86 drivers look like they're having a great time 
and they're putting their cars into the place that they wanted to. So Exactly, and a lot of them made it into the top 16. So, yes, phenomenal job, but here we are. We're now on the right side. This is our other battle in the semifinals. Who is going to be in the finals here? Is it going to be Kohashi or Yuji Saito? Yeah, so Yuji Saito, the first time making it into the final four, he has qualified 14, and Daigo Saito has qualified 12. So if Saito moves on, Daigo Saito will not be on the podium. If Kohashi moves on, Daigo Saito will be on the podium. So this is uh, something important for, um, you so know, the Yuji, qualifying yeah. is important. But uh, yeah, Yuji Saito, um, he's been in the series for a couple of years. And this is, I believe, his second year in this chassis with the VR in it. Uh, always been an impressive driver and very wild uh, from before, but never uh, had the chance to make it all the way uh, this far. And today, he looks like he's on fire. He knows what he's doing. Very exciting driving. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't go over um, what he is supposed to be doing. But uh, looking forward to this battle because it's an S15 battle. So here you go, Masanori. Kohashi is already at the line, ready to go in his Ling Long tire drift. Team Orange S15, ready to make it happen. And it looks like here you go, Yuji Saito is ready to rock and roll also. In his car shop glitter with Car Life Orange S15, powered by a VR. So, who is going to be Kanta's? competitor is it going to be his ling long tire teammate or the vr s15 by Saito. By Saito. all right let's go here they are coming in right here kohashi doing his thing nice initiation coming in oh dipping about a tire two in outer zone one and look at psycho oh tapping him out right there in outer zone two making contact Got a little wild there, but look at that proximity right there by Saito. And man, he came in real hot in the outer zone too, but here they are finishing off strong while Kohashi takes that pylon four ride. Man, he came in hot in that outer zone too. Man, that was a great job by both cars, but yeah, uh, look like um, Kohashi does dip a tire at outside zone one going to outside zone two. Check this out. He does dip a tire on the on rumble strip, and he hits. Um, he goes over the outside zone too very well, uh, but it looks like uh, Yuji Saito doesn't give him any space, gives him a little bump, uh, kind of pushes um, Kohashi out at outside end of outside zone too. Um, but uh, looks like not much of a damage is made by the cars, just you know, some body parts flying everywhere. But right there, Kohashi a little bit too outside. And he does tip a tire out on outside zone two, uh, but Saito uh, gives him a love tap from behind, telling him that he's right there behind him. And uh, Kohashi's just moving along and doing his own thing. Um, very impressive driving by both drivers. Let's see what's gonna happen when they switch places, uh, when Saito leads and uh, Kohashi gives chase. Yeah, very aggressive by Saito. And like you said, Kohashi made that mistake of coming a little bit too deep into outer zone one, dipping the tire, hitting that six inch rut you saw putting him kind of in a in a in a scary place if you think about it cuz he came around and he then he started dipping two tires in the outer zone 2 which caused Saito to make contact with him but let's see what Saito is going to do in this lead position with Kohashi in the chase Looks like they're, uh, they might be fixing or checking out the car after that contact that Saito did with Kohashi. Robbie's getting a little bit more information. There's Saito there. Heading back to the pits right now. So yeah, here we are at the semifinals. If you're just tuning in, you missed out some good tandem battles. Top 32 is already posted on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. You can check it out at Formula Drift Japan for the Japanese version or Formula Drift. There you go right there. You got Kohashi pulling up to his pits. 
Looks like uh, his left side light got knocked out and maybe some slight fender damage. No. Not sure what's going on. But we'll see here. So once they make contact with the car, that's when they start the clock. So I'm not sure what's going on just yet. The clock looks like hasn't been started. Robbie's getting a little bit more word from the team down there on the ground. Let's see. All right, here he is. He's gonna give us a little bit more insight of what's going on. All right, so Kohashi did go off course and he had to uh, slow down where, yeah, there was a tap by uh, Saito, but the judges are looking at Saito's, it wasn't Saito's fault that he bumped Kohashi because Kohashi did went off track, went off track and he had to kind of slow down and it was an awkward way for him to slow down. Um, so uh, the cause of it was uh, created by Kohashi. So Kohashi would have to use his five minutes uh, to repair the car. And uh, Yuji Saito, if he does want to check his car, he gets 10 minutes. Um, and if he runs out with 10 minutes, he still has his own five minutes. So Kohashi has to situate his car um, and use the competition timeout. And this is his only competition timeout. So no matter after this, whatever he wants to do to use the competition timeout, he won't be able to use it, so. Okay. There you go, better explanation on what's going on. Time has already been started. They're working on the car. And I think they're making sure that the damage, there was no damage sustained after him coming off track or anything like that. And there you go. The team on the other end with their live stream going on the Japanese side. And I think they're explaining right now, here's Tom Saiba and Nobutero Taniguchi, an expert of drifting. And here you go uh, on the far end, right. this guy right here, Dai Yoshihara. Next to Dai Yoshihara is <laughs> Yoichi Mamura, third judge and guest judge Dai Yoshihara, and the other judge right here, and the guy who talks <laughs> next this to me is Kenny. Here. But there you go. Sorry, you had us. We're, we're, we have a screen actually right in front of us so we can see everything live on what's going on because obviously we don't have all the views, but we're seeing exactly what y'all are seeing just a few seconds earlier. Yeah, so here it is. Uh, team is working on Kohashi's car. Looks like they're going to do some adjustment maybe in the alignment. And also... Hold on one second. Speaking of these chairs, these are actually brand new Brit chairs this year that we have. And no, we don't get to keep them. But no, they are very comfortable. Go check them out. Go buy one. They're nice. They adjust. They recline. They do everything. So looks like they're uh, getting the tire back on. Might have squared away the alignment. They got 2 minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Hands down to the Team Orange. Guys out there making it happen. Looks like they did a little bit of cosmetic work in the front and then a uh, rear left alignment or some sort in the in the portion where he oh. got the contact made by Saito. Now they're gonna uh, wax the car. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they're taping it up. Um, it looks like the bumper had damage and they did uh, some adjustment. But you know what? They have the five minutes and once they use it, even if you they use two or three minutes or five minutes, uh, they have uh, it's gonna be gone. So uh, pretty much uh, they could use the whole five minutes to do whatever they have to, even if they don't have to, you know? And yeah, there they are. They were just making sure they had the clearance for that front left tire because it was making contact after um, the contact that was made out on the course. It threw everything out of adjustment on his fender and bumper. Looks like they're lowering it, ready to go, locked and loaded. There you go, the Ling Long Tire S15 driven by Kohashi, Masanori Kohashi. A new driver in the Formula Drift Japan Series, making it all the way to the final four. 
back around so he can get back out on course, get his tires warmed up. There he goes. Hear that, 2J. Somebody on here said Robbie's barber knows what's up. You know what's crazy is? He's what? his own barber. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I started, I mean, I started to cut my own hair uh, probably like two months ago because I was shaving my head. And I was like, hey, I wish I could cut my own hair. And my wife said, hey, why don't you try it? And if you don't like it, just shave it. And I was like, okay. I think and they I were talking about it. how clean your, your beard is. Oh, my is. beard. Yeah, yeah you're oh, aligned up about my hair. Well, you, yeah, you yeah. can't see your hair. You're wearing a hat. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, every piece of hair on my body, I cut myself. Okay. So here G we go. <laughs> this is Yuji Saito's pit right here. Oh, man. Yeah, look at that. He has a little bit of time uh, because uh, he was supposed to have 10 minutes. So I, I guess the 10 minutes started earlier and now he's down to 5 uh, minutes and 48 seconds. The suspense. Here in the last battle of the semifinal, who is going to be battling against Kanta? for that top podium spot here at round one. And I wonder what's going through the young Kanta's mind right now, thinking who is going to, uh, who is going to uh, win that battle and move on so he could uh, battle. This is interesting. Look at that, hustling, hands down. I mean, th this is what happens behind the scenes. I love how we have footage here where y'all can see firsthand on how much they're you know, the aggression, the uh, everything they're doing to make this thing happen. And they're doing a quick adjustment on his right rear. But yeah, this is awesome. This is all the behind the scenes that we usually don't see on what they do to make sure that these cars are out, ready to make things happen in their tandem battles. And man, Saito has been doing a phenomenal job, super aggressive. And I know his team has been working long hours to make this car do what he needs it to do yeah because looking at this team grow from last year because you know they didn't make the tech and they weren't able to um compete so they lost a round and they competed full season last year and now coming back uh this year uh joining fd japan again full season and now they're ready locked and loaded um yeah this is something that they don't want to um or they don't want to be pushed or held back because of uh, car issues. So uh, the mechanic most likely um, doing adjustments right now, checking the toe of the car. And uh, they're probably just eyeing it right now. Um, Straight up eyeballing that alignment, but hey, they gotta hey, you know, make you gotta it happen. You gotta do what you gotta do, exactly. Gotta, yep, exactly, try to make it to the next battle. And his time is creeping along, but man, that team is scrambling. And you know what? Times like this, I think it doesn't matter. It's like, oh man, it's wet. You know, my oh, back's yeah. all soaked or whatever. But you, when you got only three minutes to work on your car. You don't care. Yeah, you don't care. Because that podium finish is all you're, you're looking after right now. So phenomenal job by his team. Oh, looks like it's ready to lower and he's gonna be ready to fight this battle against Kohashi. So right now, if you're just viewing, or you probably have been viewing, or you already forgot what happened. So Kohashi already was into the lead run right there, and Saito was in the chase. Kohashi came a little bit off course from outer zone one, dipped his tires, causing him to dip it two tires out of outer zone two, and that's when Saito came in and gave him a bump. With that being done, it wasn't Saito's fault. Kohashi initially initiated falling off the track, or dipping his tire off the track, almost causing uh, the, the collision to happen because Saito was just doing his thing in the chase position. So here they are with two minutes and 38 seconds left. So we'll see. Insane car packed with a VR38. Man, that thing is a mean car and this guy is driving like, he's driving the wheels right off of it. So actually another bad 
crash he was in last year was at Okuibuki. Exactly, he actually clashed, exactly. crashed into the Liberty Walk S15. Exactly, he clashed into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but hey, it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like they are closing the hood. I think they're almost ready to go. One last check, make sure everything's tight and good to go. And you know, he does, their team's not rolling deep. They only no, have, no, I think, no. M2 as the mechanic, so. I think um, that's his wife too, Yuji's wife. Even, you know, that's it, but his main mechanic right there behind her. And they are leaving their pits. Great job by the team. And they made it right there, coming up. So now we're gonna see the second half of the S15 battles. One is packed with the 2J, the other packed with the VR38. Who is going to take this win? Is it gonna be Yuji Saito or Masanori Kohashi? Now, like I was saying earlier, in order for Saito to get on the podium, he has to beat Kohashi and move on and go uh, against Kanta. Here we go, it's a drone. I think uh, the drone is up, that means the rain is gone. So, man, you know what? I'm worried now that the rain is up, the, dry, the track gonna is dry gonna up start a little. to get blotchy, and it's gonna be horrible for the drivers. But you know what? It's the finals, or it's almost the finals. Uh, so, yeah, gonna be uh, interesting to see. Both cars warming their tires up. We'll see what's gonna happen here. And he makes a good point, you know, the rain did stop, so we'll see. You can see right there in outer zone one, well, you can't see just yet. Still got the drone footage going on, warming these tires up, getting them both warmed up at the same time so we can get this battle started. This is our final battle in the semifinals. All right, so they are, look at that. Practicing their figure eights. <laughs> like I was saying, outer zone one, look right there. There's a nice puddle still residual, so we'll see how they're gonna be able to adjust from that coming into outer zone two. And thank you to the fans that are out here um, in the rain. Um, every, a lot of people are taking their umbrellas down, so it looks like uh, the rain has stopped. But uh, yeah, let's get this going because I don't want the, uh, the track to start to dry up either. Hey, and thank you all, all the viewers out there. See the comments. Appreciate y'all viewing in. Unfortunately, both FDUS drivers got knocked out already. So right now, Kanta is in the finals, waiting for who's gonna win this next battle between Kohashi and Saito, Yuji Saito, both S15s. One's powered by a VR38, the other one's powered by a 2J. And it'll be real interesting, because if Kohashi moves on, it's gonna be a Ling Long battle. And this Ling is Long Team Orange battle. Exactly. So um, this is the first time Ling Long is going to be joining us this year. So definitely making a statement here at round one. Here we go. The second half of the semifinals battle that we have. You... Yuji Saito here in the lead position with Kohashi in the chase. And here they are coming into outer zone one. Nice job coming in. Kohashi trying to adjust himself to be right there in the nice close proximity to Saito. Saito just doing his thing. Beautiful job. Oh, oh but almost no. too much right there in outer zone three. Here he is coming to the touch and go. Kohashi be able to adjust himself out of outer zone three. And here they are finishing strong in outer zone four. But man, Saito made a huge correction there in leaving outer zone three. Here's a replay right here. All right, I'm just looking at the placement of the cars where um, they are initiating side by side. It kind of hurts to see that because they're basically not going through outside zone one. Um, but right here, it looks like um, uh, it looks like there was a big mistake made by Saito. Um, he, he had a big bobble outside zone three, and uh, after that, that kind of made um, 
Um, that kind of made uh, Kohashi, Kohashi yeah. have to run a smaller line too. So let's go ahead and see this. Check this out. Kohashi not filling outside zone one. Um, then right after that, he sneaks right behind and tries to get on the same line as tries to get on the same line as Saito. Then right there, there was a bobble by Saito. That was kind of a big mistake because that kind of ruined um, Kohashi's chase run. Um, and, and the placement where he wanted to be. And right there, Saito doesn't fill the outside zone four either. So um, now we're going to have to take everything in consideration and uh, come up with the verdict. So, yeah, it was a long uh, five-minute competition timeout. Before we faced, it was uh, Saito making contact with Kohashi, but it was Kohashi's fault due, for, due to him coming off track on his lead run. And we finally made it to the other side of the battle with Saito in the lead and Kohashi in the chase. And here you go, we're gonna check out the replay once again. This is when Kohashi was in the lead position and Saito was in chase. You can see where he makes contact at outer zone two because here's where he dips his tire. Boom, and then comes back and dips another tire and that's where he made contact. So there they are coming around to outer zone Leaving out those three coming to the touch and go. So yeah, it's a lead to lead, chase to chase, cross comparison. How they did, judges are figuring out the verdict between these two. This is the semifinals. Who is gonna go against Kanta in his JZX 100 chaser? Sorry about that. We we're talking about um, the mistakes that were make. They were both making. But let's go ahead and check out this side by side uh, view. Right there, Saito um, gets into the outside zone one. Then right there, there's a big mistake by uh, Kohashi going off course uh, from the outside zone one. Then right here, Saito makes a mistake. Doesn't there doesn't make a huge correction, but there's a big bobble there. Uh, and as you can see. Kohashi's dragging the cone, and uh, right there, too, there was a little bit of a pause by Saito, too. So, I mean, to me, to be honest, it kind of looks like a fair share of mistakes by both drivers. Um, and I'm not going to say it was the cleanest tandem uh, that we saw um, by these two drivers in their previous battles, too. Uh, but we're going to go in and have to make a decision and on, on who's gonna, what's going to happen with this battle. So who's it going to be? Is it going to be a one more time battle? Is it going to be Saito or is it going to be Kohashi? Everyone's getting restless right now. They want the results. And here we go. Imamura oh. going Kohashi. Oh. Die with a one more time. And Robbie with a one more time. time. So there is so going to be a one more time battle for this semi final. It was close enough. And uh, I understand uh, Imamura going with Kohashi too uh, because of the mistakes that uh, Saito made too. Uh, but I think it's, it's the small difference of how heavy we thought uh, the mistakes were uh, by both drivers. So that's gonna be another one more, uh, that's gonna be a one more time for these two cars. But man, I gotta tell you one thing. They're, I mean, they don't wanna give up on this. They wanna make sure they make it into the finals to go against Kanta. I know. It's just funny here. Not funny, but I see the frustration in you viewers. But hey, stay tuned. Stick with us. We're almost at the finish. But till then, we'll be right back. Check out these commercials.
横浜。The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valentine. オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC 究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダIn our semifinals, Kohashi, Saito, they're just trying to figure it out, but they just keep driving phenomenally. But here we are, Suzuka Twin Circuit. It's starting to dry up. It looks like the rain has stopped. It's just only, you know, six hours a little too late, but here we are, myself, Kenny Harris, alongside me is Robbie Nishida doing his thing like he always does. Yes, Sleeping. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, there's like 50,000 things going on right now. Um, He's right, he is a busy man for sure, but look at that, we still got a crowd out here checking us out. We have this battle and then we have our final battle. Kanta's waiting, who's gonna dance with him out here on this uh, track? Um, it's gonna be either Kohashi or Saito. Okay, good call there. I think, I think. Yeah, but guys, thanks for sticking around from all over the world and you know, throwing us um, the messages. Um, thanks for keeping us uh, in entertained as well, as well as us trying to entertain you guys uh, out there. But hands down to the drivers and teams that made it out to this event this weekend. Even the ones that already got knocked out um, or who couldn't qualify, didn't make a qualify yesterday. Shout out to everybody out there. Uh, thanks for sticking around and also everybody waiting and watching um, from all around the world. The, yeah, all around the world. And the spectators that actually made it out here. Exactly. Uh, to the circuit. 
So the big thing is, is if you didn't check us out in the uh, qualify round, there's a lot of exciting cars this year. This is going to be a really, really exciting year, and it's going to set the tone for how it's going to be here on out. Hey, you know what? Um, we haven't even heard a peep out of our guest judge, because I know he speaks English, so he should be able to say something on the American or the English live stream. Let me go ahead and ask him a question. How are you doing today, uh, Mr. Taiji Yoshihara? Well, what happened? How are you doing? Doing great, man. We got only two in battle, which I kind of want to see more, but it is what it is, so. I'm not going to lie, you know, if I'm going to be able to see some cool battles, um, then I want to see more, but if it's going to be like uh, what we had to see earlier, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah. I think next two battles will be really good, so looking forward to see that. Yeah, so how is how does it feel to be back in Japan watching Formula Just Japan? What do you think of the what do you think of the difference uh, between how the U.S. is and in Japan? You know what? Uh, this is my first time coming back to FD Japan, like maybe like in the six years. Of course, I've watched live stream here and there, but pretty surprised, you know, the system you guys got and like the amount of employees working and stuff like that. And I guess like, starting from this this year, you guys have more like TV live stream system so it's pretty impressive so far and most impressive thing is you guys have like over 50 drivers and en enter for the full season so we have to go through almost like 100 runs for the glory final which was pretty tiring yesterday and i feel bad for you <laughs> hey see thank you dai um see just as dai said i think i want to uh i want to push for them to implement the um knockout qualify system like what they do in the US where everybody drives once and the top 16 is there then after that whoever that didn't make it into the top 16 goes for the second run um, that'll knock out the qualify uh, runs maybe down to three fourths or so yeah because um, right now we did 94 runs yesterday that's 94 judges that you three had to do yeah, I, you know I just had to talk about what was on the track. That was easy. Hey, you know what? But hands down, because, I mean, thank you for coming out and doing this, because, I mean, yeah, it was hard for us, but you also made it through, too, because you had to watch 90-something runs, too. Took it to me, right? Dude, but I'm so impressed that you have to do all these judging, and you have to communicate with the base control, and you have to talk as well. Oh my God! So he hey, got a little taste I, I, of your life. Hey, I, I, I like die. <laughs> <laughs> makes me, makes me look better. No, but uh, I think uh, it's cool because uh, we don't mind doing this. I mean, Kenny comes out too, and I mean, this isn't your full-time job either. You know, he works for the military, um, comes out here and takes time away from his family and time off his work just to come out here to, you know, support the sport. So this is a love that we have towards uh, drifting. And hopefully you guys are feeling it right now because, uh, yeah, we just want better. You know, if you have anything that you want to say, leave comments. Um, let us know what's up. Um, I know there's a lot of flaws uh, from us speaking and also the system. And, you know, that's earlier live shut for down. You, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that happened. Um, but, yeah, that's live. So, um uh, that's the biggest thing. It's live, so we do appreciate the comments. I see them out here. I appreciate y'all the love, the consideration you're putting into the words you're writing and or you're you typing. Go. That's uh, Saito's uh, Saito's pit again. Uh, we just saw them earlier uh, working on uh, their vehicle. But there you go. Yeah, uh, I think they are fixing, maybe uh, getting the tow done right. Once again, working hard. He's got a small, he's working with a small team right now, but able to make it happen. But no, just like Dai was saying, Robbie has a lot. He talks to the, uh, what is it? The inspection crew down there that handles the time and making sure things are happening on course. Then on top of that, he's judging and then also chiming in and commentating with myself, sometimes taking the reins and, and controlling the conversation that we're having on here. But his expert, you know, precision eye that he sees on the course, explaining to y'all out there what he's seeing as a judge, 
and what some of y'all aren't quite seeing, but most of y'all do see, because like you saw in the qualifier round, you guys are pretty spot on on the score. It looks like he's ready to go. I can't quite hear what he's saying to the camera crew right now. Yeah, you're right. Round one has been crazy. That's a good indicator that this whole season is going to be phenomenal. The cars are insane. The drivers are phenomenal, amazing drivers, and the teams are coming out packing. But most of all, we have y'all staying up crazy late hours of the night. If you're in the States right now, I mean, it's probably well over past 1 o'clock in the morning plus. So appreciate that. And all over wherever you're at in the uh, around the world, thank you for viewing in with us. So they're getting these cars ready. Masanori and uh, Kohashi is going to be going against Yuji Saito once again in this semifinal battle. And they're trying to dictate who's going to be the one that's going against Kanta. Kanta right now is in the lead or has the lead qualified spot right now. He's doing a phenomenal job. He already has a solidified spot. He's going to be waiting for who he's got to beat to beat that top spot for round one. All right, so I think um, I think they started the five because they were working on the car, and it looks like Kanta's car looks. I'm not sorry, not Kanta. Uh, Masanori Kohashi's car is ready because it is uh, lined up uh, right behind the um, the burnout box. There you go, right here. You see it on um, the the view. Masanori Kohashi. He's on his phone. Hey, it's an international thing. There you go. There oh, you go. Like, Checking yeah. us out. Oh, he's he's probably watching the replay uh, of, of the driving. So, man, I wish I had the audio. I can't hear what he's saying either. Robbie's checking out. I'm checking out y'all's comments right now. Man, 2 p.m. 12:59 in uh, was that North Dakota? 5 a.m., 3 a.m., 7 a.m. Oh, here man. we go. Oh, looks like Saito's this battle's about to start. Up. Yep. 7 p.m. in New Zealand, I believe it said. Vegas is in there. Appreciate that, y'all. But looks like these drivers are going to be ready to battle it out. I know y'all are ready for this final battle, but we have to get past these two individuals to get there. So let's see. Let's get this. Both cars getting warmed up. But oh yeah, we got some time. Let me give a shout out to Robbie. Go check out his YouTube. He does a little behind the scenes so you guys can see what's going on here. So yeah, go check him out. Give him some love. Hey, you know what? And uh, while we're at it too, make sure you um, check out uh, Dai Yoshihara's uh, YouTube channel too because yes. he is documenting uh, some of the adventures he's going through um, while he's here. And um, he's been, you know, like you said, he hasn't been a, a FD Japan judge for like six years and he's been away it's been a few years. It's been a few years uh, for him uh, since he's been back to Japan as well. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool uh, to be able to see it from our point of view, and uh, also you can see it through Dai's point of view too, uh, exactly. how the FD Japan rounds are too. So yeah, go check it out for sure. Looks like they're almost ready to go. And also um, make sure you go and follow. Jay-Z underscore Kenji. That's Kenny's Instagram. No. <laughs> hey, everybody, everybody, blow up his Instagram account. Please spare me. <laughs> Every, everybody start messaging him. Send. Beep. Now, if you, if, you message, if you message me, I'll message back. I, I give love to everybody. I appreciate y'all out there. Hey, you heard that. Especially, you heard that. Especially with y'all on this uh, the live stream. You know, I appreciate y'all viewing in. 
And, you know, the go those of you around the world that have reached out to me, hey, thank you. The friendship that I've made with you through the Internet and through uh, social media, it's been awesome. This is a once-in-a-life experience. Many of you all know if you've been to an event and you want to see behind the scenes but you just can't, I'm actually getting that opportunity. So thanks to Robbie, thanks to the crew, and thanks to the Formula Japan family that has accepted me in for these last three, two seasons, now rolling into the third season. Yeah, it's funny that um, Kenny thinks that he was accepted. We're just using him. so <laughs> They're using me because I bring I, them I feel bad. I feel bad because Kenny thinks he's part of us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say anything I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's the mean. love right that's there. That's mean. The love no, and no, hate. No. No, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to do this without Kenny either. So we're always talking about, you know, back and forth. And now here, here we, we go. It's going to be a one more time battle. Finally, back to what we're here for. Here we are. Kohashi in the lead. Saito in the chase position. The track conditions are a little different. Here they are coming in outer zone one. And Kohashi coming in. Oh, but Saito just giving a low oh. tap of maybe too much. Here it is. Kohashi not even phased by it. Coming around outer zone three. Whipping it into oh. this straight but right here. And man, Saito falling apart right here and not sure if it was too much of an adjustment that his team made in the rear end of his car. But there you go, Kohashi finishing strong throughout this lead run that he threw down. Wow, I could see the frustration coming from Saito. Yeah, that was very interesting. Saito lost it twice there on the track. Yeah, so let me go ahead and see the replay because this is really hard because the, the condition of the track isn't so good. It's very slick. And uh, yeah, this will be part of the D cell area too. So, oh man, I don't know though. <laughs> These conditions though, they're, they're definitely challenging. So Robbie's reanalyzing it. Yeah, Saito definitely struggled throughout that chase position that he had. He's definitely going to have to step it up when he comes up into the lead while Kohashi's going to be in the chase. So there you go right here. I think they're making sure that Kohashi didn't decel there, causing Saito to come in and give him a tap. Yeah, it looks like I was trying to see to make sure that it wasn't Kohashi um, um, changing the pace of his driving, but it didn't look like it. It looked like Saito came in a little too hot and didn't give him any space and kind of gave him a tap. Or almost gave him a tap. Out, so. So let's see how Saito's going to do here in the lead. See if that rear alignment that they had adjusted is was the effect of it. But here he is holding that e-brake very long through all of outer zone two. Whipping back around. Kohashi kind of lost there, but keeping that close proximity to Saito. And Saito still struggling, leaving outer zone three and not able to lay down there, but here he is coming out of the touch and go into outer zone four. And man, Saito definitely was struggling throughout the course. So we'll see here. Yeah, so this looks like Saito probably doesn't like how Kohashi was leading. And it looks like he was kind of on his brakes for a little long, longer than he's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, but Kohashi pretty much. You know, and this this is definitely night and day on how Yuji Saito has been performing all day. I don't know if it's because of the weather conditions, the rain stopped. There's a little bit of a few dry spots going on here and there, or or the rear alignment that his team did on his car, and he's it just threw him off just yeah. a little bit. I mean, that's a long e-brake uh, yeah. right there, too. Right there, too. It got slick a little, um, threw a little bit of angle there, too, coming out of outside zone three. Imamura Yoichi. Yoichi Imamura goes to there Kohashi. Go. Dai Yoshara and I go to Masanori Kohashi. So Masanori Kohashi gets the win and here, we'll, moves on. It looks like we're going to have a Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange battle here in the finals of round one of the Formula Drift Japan 
2022 season, or round one right here. We're at Suzuka Twin Circuit. All right, so that means that Saito, he was two places under Daigo Saito, so he is fourth place. Third place podium is gonna be Daigo Saito. Not a bad start for him because uh, he just came in. It's been a while since he's been out of the FD Japan series, and he just came in, and now uh, he is making, he's on the podium for the first round. So very impressive driving by uh, Daigo Saito as well. Exactly. So they're going to let him go back, let Kohashi go back to the pits, get his car squared away, ready for his final battle. But man, that team's going to be busy getting both cars ready. Look at Kanta. Let's see what he's got to say. All right, so I don't have any audio from uh, what they're saying, so there's the team out there. Uh, that's Kumakubo, the owner of Ebisu Circuit. He is out here to support their team. Um, All right, so he said he didn't think that he was going to see his, uh, it was going to be a last uh, teammate uh, battle in the finals, but they made it and they're happy that they're here and they wanted to show or put on a good show and they said they weren't completely dominant through uh, 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 the ladder today. But uh, they were getting there, and they just want to show uh, the fans who are out here and everybody watching uh, something great. So we are looking forward to uh, a great battle by these two drivers. Yeah, it's very unfortunate we're not seeing Kumakubo out here because, man, that round that he did against Suenaga in uh, Fuji last round last year, phenomenal. Now he handed the car, the keys down to Suenaga and said, hey, Hold it down for me. So phenomenal job by this team. This dom team's dominating right now, and they're really, you know, putting the mark down. There's Suyanaga right there. Yeah, so there's Suyanaga. Um, he is cheering on uh, both of his drivers. They must be very close, so they're probably rivals, but at the same time, uh, teammates too. So pretty sure that it's going to be hard to pick to see who's going to, who they want to win. Um, either or, it's going to be a, a Ling Long Tire um, Team Orange car that's going to be on the top of the podium. Exactly. So. And like we said before, this is the first season Ling Long Tire has joined us. And then Team Orange also coming in with a full stack team. So we'll see who's going to take it. There you go. You see Kanta putting his helmet on, getting ready. Get one last picture in before the battle starts. I know y'all ready are you guys are ready to see these two guys battle it out. But let's see. So they got a few more minutes before the battle's gonna start. What's everybody got online? Who do you think's gonna win?
、まあ、彼の方が FDJ の先輩なんで、先輩を任す気持ちでいきたいと思います。く車の調子はどうですか？車はもう完璧です。メーカーさんのおかげで、もうまっすぐ走ります。So he was saying that he is a newcomer for FD Japan, and Kanta is actually a veteran in FD Japan, so he's coming to get him.、Uh, he wants to take him out.、Um, and they asked、uh, how his car was, and、uh, he said, My car is perfect.、Uh, you know, the mechanics work really hard、uh, to get his car together. I mean, think about it. Before the qualify on Friday,、um, his, he blew a motor. They had to take the car out once、uh, to get the motor swap, too.、Uh, so look at how far they came after they did all that. And now it is a you know, teammate battle by the two cars. See who's going to win. Is it going to be the younger、uh, vet of Formula Drift Japan, Kanta, or is it going to be the newcomer that's a little bit older、uh, than Kanta,、uh, which is Masanori Kohashi?、Uh, first time being in the Formula Drift Japan series. Both Ling Long Tire, Team Orange vehicles, and also teammates. Looking forward to their battle. Looks like online we got a 50 50 split so far on who's going to win, on who's voting on who, but you are right. It is going to be a Ling Long Team Orange win. Just a matter of which one of these two are going to take it. And like I said before, throughout these battles, Kanta came in with this JZX 100 Chaser in Sugo, debuted the car and laid it down and podiumed first position there, taking it home, but was not able to finish the whole season. So. Definitely a competitor this year for the points race, and what a way to start here at round one. So, right now, once again, outer zone one is still looking pretty、uh, saturated and has a lot of puddles going on. In another hot spot, drivers were telling me earlier about the rain that outer zone three, once they leave outer zone three, that's another hot spot for how、um, saturated it is. And I can see right now it's actually pretty damp there, so it's going to be a tough spot for them coming out of outer zone three and trying to catch some grip. Into this touch and go, but the touch and go looks like it's getting some dry spots out there. So, definitely going to be an interesting final battle here at round one Suzuka Twin Circuit. You can see right there the repair that was made early on. For Kohashi's car. Okay, finally leaving the pits,、um, going to the start line.、Uh, we're we're going to finally get to see the finals here、uh, by these two drivers. Oh, and we're going to spare you on the ads. We let you guys see the pit camera right there. So, yeah, thanks to the camera guys out there showing y'all what's going on. But looks like these cars are ready to battle this final battle out. It has been a long day. Top 32, hour later, rolled into top 16. And here we are finally. And there's no lights out here. So it's gonna, this battle needs to happen. So we'll see. Is it gonna be Kanta or. Kohashi. Yes, it is going to be a 2J powered car that wins. But is it going to be a Nissan or a Toyota? So we'll see here. Robbie's ready to go, he's ready to get a judge in. Find out who the winner is today. 
So while we got the time, FBJ2 is next weekend. It's going to be a combo of Japan slash English live stream. They're only going to have one live stream going, so it's going to be a combo between the two. If you want to view in, it's actually going to be here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. First round of FDJ2. And then round two for FDJ is going to be at Ebisu next month. No, not next month. June. All right, we're at the finals here at the first round of 2022 Formula Drift Japan. Suzuka Twin Circuit in Mia Prefecture. The battle is going to be the number one qualifier from yesterday's qualify, Kanta versus the number seven qualifier from the uh, yesterday's qualify, Masanori Kohashi, both on Ling Long tires, both from Team Orange. Very different cars, but both with two J's packed into their cars. Let's see what the first battle is going to look like. Kanta has been very, very consistent all day long, and here he is coming up to outer zone one. Beautiful initiation coming in, but look at that. Kohashi right on his door. Beautiful job by Kohashi. Hold through both cars, dipping a tire, swinging back around to outer zone three. And Kohashi trying to dial in and close that proximity. And there you go, that slick spot right there. But both cars doing a beautiful job in this tandem battle. And nice finish, Kohashi the whole time right there on Kanta's fender. Wow, that was a very clean run by Kohashi. He was all over uh, Kanta, but at the same time, like I said, Ko uh, Kanta ri driving a very nice wide line for him. Look at that. Oh, actually, uh, Kanta was uh, maybe a tire off, off at the outside zone too. But he fills outside zone three, but um, Kohashi, once again, not giving him any space, not letting him go. Very great proximity by Kohashi chasing Kanta around. And right here too, Kanta taking it all the way out to the outside zone four. Nice job by both drivers. Very exciting to see uh, close tandem, especially with the weather condition. Now there's no rain, but I know the track is, you know, a little wet. That's two tires off uh, from the lead car and uh, Kohashi just chasing him down where he's supposed to be, so. Look at that. He's just mimicking, mimicking yeah, he's mimicking every move that Kanta is doing. Now when they switch, is Kanta going to do the same? He's been very Kohashi. aggressive all day. He's been very consistent, so we're going to see. Not sure how much practice they've had together in tandem battles, but man, Kohashi knows this machine that he's powering. And look at that right there, dialing it in, getting right there on his inner fender. And this is going to be a tough one. Kanta has to step it up here in his chase position. Ooh, so you said it was a 50-50 thing, right? So um, I wonder who's going to win. Who do you think is going to win, Kenny? <laughs> here we go. Now it's the second run for the finals. This may be it. Kohashi in the lead right here. Kanta has to step his game up, and he needs to keep that close proximity. Oh! And look, oh, he gave him a left tap and pushed him out in the outer zone, too. Kanta causing contact right there, coming way aggressive, way too aggressive in the outer zone, too, creating that washout. Man, if there was a wall there. Oh, oh man, I wouldn't even, I don't even want to imagine. That's, that was, that was a rough hit right there. But we already knew Kanta had to bring his A game and he had to bring the aggression. He really did, leaving out of zone one, but too, he was too hot. And here you go right here. Man. Yeah, so. He bumped him pretty early, um, maybe the beginning of outside zone two. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, even just because it's an, it's it's wet out, um, the beginning of the outside zone two is probably still going to be a decel zone if they had to be. And it yeah. doesn't it doesn't look like Kohashi was throwing a tremendous amount of angle where he was like backwards entry or anything. So it looks like Kanto was coming obviously coming in too hot, but it looks like he was over rotating and then his back right gave him a nice tap on Kohashi. And this is not the way 
We wanted all this to pan out. Wow, so I think uh, we have a winner. That's a good call here. We're going to get the car situated, get them pulled up. Looks like we do have a winner. Cars rolled back to the pits. Looks like the uh, crowd is rolling out back to the, the vendor area right now. And yeah, so far it looks like uh, Team Orange won, Ling Long Tire. So we'll see. Was it the big body JZX100 Chaser or was it the Infamous Sylvia S15. Thank you all out there for sticking with us through this long top 16 battle. We appreciate y'all viewing in all around the world. Crazy time staying up with us or waking up early for us. Thank y'all. If you tune in back into us, uh, and check us out again, we appreciate that also. But you can see right there, they're rolling back. And yes, hands down to the crew out here, the FD J crew and the crew at Suzuka Twin Circuit. And like y'all are saying in the comments and to the MR2 that's holding down that start gate. Um, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Hopefully we'll get these cars up here and get this wrapped up. But like I said before, next week we will be back here for FDJ2 opening season for it. Round one of FDJ2 is gonna be here next week. So tune in to us next week on that. What's up? Sorry, uh, yeah, I was just hoping for the cars to come out here real quick so we can uh, crown the winner of the round one. They had to get one last. Uh, change one, tires, fresh no, tires? No, they wanted to get w the wax on there. The oh, yeah, rain that's right. Stuff, that's right. They wanted, they wanted the, to get that, yeah. The dirt scraped off. They went a little off-roading, so. Well, let's see what y'all got to say out there. Thank y'all for viewing. Our next round for FDJ is going to be at Ebisu. It's going to be exciting. We're going to have, I think, a lot more cars, too. So we will see. Yeah, the Ebisu. Man, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? Because it's the Ebisu circuit. I'm going to bring a car up there. I'm going to go drive it myself, too. Hey, there you go. That gives you another reason why you should come out. You can see Robbie's. Are you going to bring the infamous Fuga out? Yeah, because it's under construction, but I think by then it should be done. Um, I'm getting some upgrades made to that car, so it's going to be pretty cool. So uh, yeah. I'll share that uh, with everybody later, too. Yeah, you should go tune in. Go check out Hey Man Robbie on YouTube. He has a lot of behind the scenes of his his build with the Fuga and, and all the craziness that he does on all the time that he has. And, uh, yeah, I do, I do uh, you know, whenever I do go out... Um, car related stuff I will go ahead I, I do take video and try to put it on my channel but you should also go and check out Dai Yoshihara's YouTube channel too yes he's uh, been documenting everything yeah, out he's here been yeah no no because I do it all the time and uh, maybe if you want to see it in a new form or a different point of view um, Dai is you know from, from, from the states so yeah from someone cooler I mean yeah he's cooler too he's cooler <laughs> than I am but you know what I'm a year older than him but I think everybody thinks, oh, no, no, he is younger than me. So He, he looks a lot younger than me, though. He does. He does carry youth very well. But, yes, like I was saying, I went back into it. So the 18th and 19th is going to be Ebisu for round two of the FDJ series. 
So if you're in the area, you should come out, check it out at Ebisu Circuit, check out the wild experience. And hey, you, while you're out there, you can get a few laps in on the other courses that are available out there. Or just check out I the wild animals. Doing, I think they were doing something with the, the, the school course too, remember? They were- They just re like revamped that, yeah, they reopened it up. But he uh, said, uh, he said they're not done yet. So. Is it Golden Week? I think he's gonna open it. Don't quote me on that, but I know. Oh, no, I think he it's post next weekend. Okay, he posted oh, man, pictures we're on be it. An FDJ too. I know he posted pictures of it. Um, they repaved it, redid everything oh, out there. Wait, so yeah. if it's gonna be on the same weekend as FDJ two, I'm sorry, you guys aren't you guys aren't allowed to go to Ebisu. You're gonna have to watch FDJ two on actually. Too. Oh no no. Next weekend is actually Matsuri. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Hey guys, don't go to Matsuri. Watch FDJ two. <laughs> And come to Suzuka Twin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, go you have could, some fun. Could, enjoy drifting. But hey, come you, out to Ebisu when we're out there. Come say what's up. And go drifting with Robbie. Yeah, come out. I mean, if I'm at the track, and if you want to ride along, and if you ever see me at the track, come say hi. Um, Kenny comes out to the track every once in a while, too. So. But don't get a ride along with me. <laughs> Your experience will be a lot more. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mellow, I guess you could say. Chaotic. But looks like... Looks like Kanta's car is right there in view. They're getting everything set up in front of the judges' stand for the cars to roll up and crown the... Who's going to be victorious here in round one? Here you go. This is the uh, previous champions that we had, 2015 to 17. Andrew Gray, Gray Andrew. <laughs> I, I didn't even notice that though. It says Gray Andrew, but Gray Andrew, Andrew Gray. Uh, actually, he's a champion four times, and he did win the 2019 series as well. 2018, Mad Mike Woodette uh, came in and took the championship as well. In the last two years, um, 2020 and 2021, Koichi Yamashita uh, won the championship. So that's we only have three champions uh, within these past couple years. And you know what? This year might be a new year. You never know. And I know Koichi Yamashita. Uh, he was knocked out earlier today, but um, I'm pretty sure he is looking into trying to get a three-peat. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of new drivers this year, and two of them right now are going to be are landing the podium this year, and they're they're definitely coming gunning for that position and trying to mix it up this year for the championship. So here we are. Finally, we got them lined up, ready to present. Finally, you got them lined up, <laughs> ready to present. The winner of round one oh, of the no, G-Shock no, 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 presents. No, 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 Where, where's Kanta going? He's getting back in his car. He's like, yo, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm good. No, nah, they're, they're going to move his car a little bit. But, yes, this is going to be it. A, the final right here. We're going to present it for round one of the G-Shock presents Formula Drift Japan 2022 open season right here at Suzuka Twin Circuit in the Mia Prefecture. We've had a, we had beautiful weather yesterday for qualifying unfortunately we had rain all day long up until the very end which is perfect for the presentation and yeah clean up. It, it's <laughs> perfect because it stopped raining uh just in time for us to do uh, the winner and the ceremony and presenting to you guys the winners and the podium finishers of the first round here at uh suzuka twin circuit All right, so let's go ahead and start from third place here at Formula Drift Japan, round one, Suzuka Twin Circuit. Third place podium finisher is driving the GR86 Trail Motor Apex Racing, car number 87, Daigo Saito. Congratulations, great driving all weekend. Good job. 
he's back and uh, he's already on the podium. So let's see what kind of a uh, year it's going to be. And now we will be announcing the first place, the guy who's on top of the podium, in the middle of the podium here at Suzuka Twin Circuit for the uh, G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan 2022 season, the first round. And the winner goes to Ling Long Tire Drift, Team Orange, car number 27, Masanori Kohashi. Congratulations for taking the first spot. He just came in from nowhere. This is his first time competing in the series and he takes a win for the first round. And second place goes to Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange, car number 57, Kanta. Congratulations to all these drivers. This is two teammates from Team Orange and the Ling Long Tire team. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a it's total domination right here on the podium. It is. Ling Long Tire and Team Orange out here dominating first and second place. Two of these drivers brand new to the series this year. Phenomenal. Yeah, it, very young drivers and uh, yeah, looking forward to their careers. Um, and let me go ahead and uh, listen in to what they're going to say for the interview so I can translate it real quick for you guys. ありがとうございます。今のお気持ちを。いやめっちゃ嬉しいです。さすがにちょっとえ、まあ僕急に参戦してきたんですけども、あのなかなか勝てるような状況じゃないなっていう感じてたんで、え、まあ本当に単純に
All right, back to Conta's interview. He said Daigo is really fast, and he kind of got carried away and did dip tires and stuff like that. But uh, you know what? He said thank you to the team because the team helped him out and got the car repaired and got it back on track. Now, Daigo's interview, he said this is his brand new team with TMAR, and he said it's a very, very strong team, and uh, he's looking forward to a good season. He said the next round he wants to make sure that he's going to take the win and also move on uh, forward from that too, even thinking about you know trying to move this team uh, over to the USA as well. So he said watch out for this team in the future, and uh, looks like he's very impressed with the, with the results they have, they have. Yeah, that TMR team is very impressive. Both drivers, I mean, they're setting the bar for not only the pits, but the form of driving that they're bringing out here. The dynamic and everything they're bringing out, they're a team to beat. But at the same time, Ling Long is putting it out there. Team Orange is making it happen. Exactly. So I know there's a lot of competitive teams out there. And this time, these three drivers made it to the top. I wonder who's going to make it to the top uh, in the next round. It looks like the rain's coming back down. I guess perfect timing for cleanup. But yes, thank you all out there for viewing. Spectators look like they're rolling out now. But y'all out there that are still sticking around, checking us out, listening to the drivers, thank y'all for viewing into them and uh, cheering them on. So appreciate that. Robbie, you did a phenomenal job this whole entire weekend. So Dye, did you, Kenny. Di did a phenomenal job. Di did a great Di did okay. Di did all right. Yep. Nah, he did a phenomenal job. I uh, hopefully he had fun. We had fun with him, especially. Yeah, you know what? And uh, you know, I would like him to um, come back to judge with us again uh, whenever he has the time to. You know, that would be that would be very cool. Most definitely, because I was able to talk to somebody else. Yeah, I know, other than just me, because exactly. there's nobody else that speaks English. And Dai <laughs> got an experience of how much people want to talk to Robbie. So Dai kept me company more than anything. <laughs> but so thank you for coming out here, Dai, and uh, having this experience with us on this side of the house, not actually behind the wheels. So Yeah, look at these three beautiful cars. I like that, you know, on the podium, three different cars. A brand new build by the TMAR team, by Daigo Saito. Second place is uh, Kanta um, with the JDX 100 that they just debuted last year and uh, took the win at Suko. And right here, the newcomer, uh, but a veteran in the drifting community, uh, Masano Ikohashi taking first, top two cars, uh, this time is the Ling Long Drift team uh, from Team Orange and uh, TMAR, uh, Daigo Saito's team, uh, takes third place. Here's the schedule for As this year. We have six rounds. We just finished the first round, so we got five more left. We got a nice long break before the next one, June 17th and 19th, so we have a little over a month break in between here. But we'll see how it's going to be at Ebisu Circuit. But in between there, we have the FDJ2 round, which is next weekend. So you can tune in to us next weekend. It's going to be a little bit of a blend because it's going to be Japanese English going on at the same time. So if you are tuning in, you have to uh, bear with us in on that with the live stream. But you can All see right, the rest. So like you said, uh, thank you very much for sticking around, guys. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Robbie. And uh, you guys have a good night or a good morning or good evening, wherever you're at. And until I see you guys next time, peace take it out. Easy. No, take it easy. It's not peace out. Take it easy. All right, later, guys. <laughs>
横浜。The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valentine. と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC 究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍する剣だその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔能性世界が認めた技術と信頼を待ち森で高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダWhat's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospo, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Made in Japan. 